uh, actually an increase. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, breakdown of this is that 74% uh, uh, or 17.671 billion goes to maintenance and operating expenses. These are really the expenditures for research and development for uh, uh, the different um, te technical services that we are rendering, uh, and then uh, including the um, uh, funds that uh, we devote for our human resource or scholarships uh, of the OST. 18% <clears throat> goes to personal services, and uh, our capital outlay for this year, uh, the earmarked amount represents 8% of the total budget. Uh, the breakdown of this are actually uh, shown. Uh, we have 18 agencies in all, and we have uh, also the Office of the uh, Secretary. And um, I would just like to call attention to the fact that uh, uh, those that uh, uh, had the reductions in budget are, among others, the uh, Research and Development Institutes with an aggregate reduction of 76.242 million, uh, wherein the uh, research and, deve and development institutes affected were th are the Forest Products Research and Development Institute, the Industrial Technology Development Institute, the Metals Industry Research and Development Center, the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute, and the Philippine Textile Research Institute. Uh, the biggest uh, uh, reduction in budgets are in the Industrial Technology Development Institute, and in the uh, Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. Now, uh, in the case of our councils, uh, uh, each of the councils had a, uh, uh, an increase, although uh, not, not much. Uh, and uh, in the case of our service uh, uh, agencies, uh, PBOX uh, had a reduction of 133.355 million, okay? Um, mostly earmarked for uh, uh, new, new stations and new equipment. Now, the next slide that shows uh, the significant accomplishments. Uh, uh, first of all, in our effort for, to, to achieve inclusive development, uh, we supported the establishment of 23 niche uh, research centers in the regions. Uh, so these are now, there are 23 that have been set up so far in 16 regions and uh, we have uh, 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 supported them with 854 million pesos going into facilities improvement and R&D projects. We also approved 49 collaborative projects between uh, uh, industry and research institutions. Uh, Cradle stands for collaborative research uh, to uh, leverage the Philippine economy. Uh, collaborative research and development to leverage the Philippine economy. This is our way of encouraging partnerships between industry and particularly the academe. As we know, uh, both would like to do R&D. Uh, the academe have the people to do the R&D, but uh, uh, sometimes the, um, the choice of uh, topics are really mostly intended for publications. Uh, but in the case of industry, they want to address their problems and they want to come up with innovative products and technologies, but they don't have the people uh, to do the R&D. So we encourage them to partner. And uh, so far we have approved uh, a total funding of 222 million for this in 16 uh, regions. Uh, we also uh, are uh, strengthening the research capabilities of uh, so-called host institutions. These are actually the the uh, nicers and uh, the, the would-be nicers. And uh, we send to them very experienced research and development leaders who will try to uh, help them uh, with their efforts to uh, upgrade. So these are uh, uh, national, nationally uh, recognized and renowned research and development uh, uh, leaders uh, who agreed to be uh, based in the provinces for a particular period of time. And, uh, of course, uh, we had uh, so far uh, conducted consultations on the uh, business uh, innovation for science and technology. This is really our assistance to uh, enterprises who want to set up their own R&D facilities in their respective uh, uh, workplaces. 
In terms of human resource development, uh, we uh, uh, are actually proud that uh, so far, uh, the number of scholars that we have been supporting have been uh, consistently increasing. And uh, actually, this is one of the areas where uh, we have been getting uh, budget increases. So that in uh, 2019 to 2020, our uh, scholars that we support number at 42,190. And uh, for this new school year, uh, we are supporting 44,398. And when we uh, go to next year, uh, we expect that we will be supporting 52,946. Actually, the increase in our budget of almost uh, 3 point, uh, I think that is 3.4 million, uh, more than two a billion, more than two billion of that is going to increase in scholarships. And uh, we can say that this is very important, not only to develop our manpower in, in science and technology, but this is really one way of lifting families out of poverty. Most of our scholars are taken from the below poverty level uh, sector. In the case of our research and development programs, our major programs, of course, uh, we are very uh, happy that we have uh, been doing this for quite some time now, and it, it is very timely. So these are the initiatives on drug discovery and development, particularly those coming from our by, from our rich biodiversity, the implementation of the malnutrition reduction program, uh, wherein uh, we were able to establish eight new complementary food processing facilities and to monitor 37 that has have been uh, put up in the past years. Although this one requires a lot more uh, units of complementary food processing facilities. Uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, done uh, R&D and achieved uh, a number of accomplishments in terms of transportation or mobility. Uh, we have finished our hybrid train, hybrid electric road train, and we are just uh, awaiting uh, action on the commercialization adoption of these. And uh, we can give details of that uh, later on. And then uh, by December, we will la launch our hybrid uh, trimaran fast crop. Uh, actually, this is uh, a combination of passenger and uh, cargo trimaran uh, with, with a new design so that it can uh, utilize the wave energy as it runs, uh, thereby reducing the fuel requirements by about 25%. Uh, this is uh, uh, an all Filipino initiative. Uh, the trimaran is about to be completed. It is being uh, assembled in uh, uh, Aklan, uh, uh, in New Washington, uh, our uh, implementers are the uh, Aklan State University and a private Filipino-owned uh, shipbuilding company uh, whose owners are actually former OFWs in shipbuilding from uh, uh, Norway. Then we have uh, established Natural Dye Center and the Regional Yarn Production and Innovation Center uh, for uh, uh, the textile industry. Uh, we really consider this as a major innovation because uh, uh, because of the yarn production and innovation center, the local uh, uh, produce of fiber, particularly the local cotton production in uh, region six now finds a ready uh, processing facility so that they can be converted into yarns and uh, uh, this will be used in the uh, uh, um, local garment industry in region six. Then we have uh, actually added uh, additional uh, infrastructure. This is the Advanced Manufacturing Center, uh, which is uh, really world-class. And uh, this will be featuring additive manufacturing, uh, like 3D printing, uh, to develop uh, products uh, and prototypes. And we have also the Amerial. This is the Advanced um, Mechatronics and Robotics uh, Laboratory. Okay, these are both uh, located in the area of the Metals Industry Research and Development Center. Uh, this, uh, uh, particularly the Amerial or the Mechatronics and Robotics, will be very active in uh, our program to upgrade our uh, uh, small and medium enterprises uh, to uh, really approach the Industry 4.0 uh, standards. And then, of course, uh, 
we are proud of our uh, R&D initiatives on space technology uh, and uh, one of the accomplishments, although uh, it did not become part of DOST, is the establishment of the Philippine Space uh, Agency. And uh, we have, of course, with us today, the first Director General of the Philippine Space Agency, who was formerly our Director of the Advanced Science and Technology Institute of DOST, Dr. Joel Marciano. And uh, we established uh, ground receiving stations to complement the uh, satellites that uh, are in orbit and also to gather data uh, from other satellites uh, uh, with whom we have, uh, the owners of whom we have collaboration. The uh, next, uh, the last two uh, uh, slides uh, uh, actually gives details of the significant accomplishments. I will go, not go through them uh, one by one, uh, but uh, we have assisted uh, small and medium enterprises in technology upgrading. Uh, we have uh, uh, expanded our uh, unified laboratory services, which now integrates the services of 23 DOST and 31 non-DOST laboratories all over the country, plus eight international member laboratories located in Australia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, and Vietnam. Uh, we started it, but uh, there are now laboratories in other countries which have joined our uh, network. And uh, this is very good because even if we do not have the facility here, we can easily have them tested in other laboratories uh, to serve our uh, industries in particular. Uh, we have expanded our uh, online ordering and delivery system, the one store program, uh, which originally was intended only for companies which were assisted by DOST, but now it has expanded to cover any enterprise uh, for as long as they meet certain requirements that like uh, FDA approval, uh, official registration, and others. And the technology business incubation program, uh, it was mentioned here that we have established 19 technology business incubators spread all over the country uh, in eight innovation hubs, but uh, uh, we, we have uh, already acted uh, to uh, uh, round this up to 20 or even 21. Uh, in the next uh, uh, few months. Then we have the community, community empowerment to science and technology. These are really to serve the poorest of the poor and marginalized communities uh, by bringing to them uh, science and technology in various aspects of uh, uh, their life. Then we have uh, our participation in the disaster risk reduction and uh, climate change adaptation management programs uh, the Philippines is recognized as one of those that are leading in the region as far as R&D in disaster risk reduction is uh, concerned. Uh, most of these are really in the areas uh, operated by uh, uh, PAGASA, by PBOX, and our Advanced Science and Technology Institute. And uh, finally, on the COVID-19 initiatives, uh, we just want to uh, go through them. We follow the so-called uh, 4K uh, framework, uh, kalusugan, kabuhayan, kaayusan at kinabukasan uh, to address uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, concerns. And in kalusugan, uh, we have, of course, the development of our local diagnostic kits, uh, uh, the clinical uh, trials ongoing for different natural products uh, as well as uh, non-natural uh, non products uh, which have been uh, found to have uh, beneficial effects to COVID-19 uh, patients. Uh, we are working very closely with uh, uh, the World uh, WHO for the solidarity trials in both vaccines and therapeutics. And uh, we have, of course, funded and we have already good results in the case of PPEs, medical devices, and accessories uh, to help our uh, frontliners. Uh, and uh, there are uh, actually several that are still ongoing. And uh, uh, we would like to mention at this point the initiative of DOST to establish the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines or simply the Virology Institute of the Philippines so that we will have capability to develop our own therapeutics, vaccines, and diagnostic uh, uh, kits uh, for uh, diseases that are uh, uh, introduced because of virus. And in the case of Kabuhayan, uh, we are doing our part in the case of uh, 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 enabling our uh, returned 
overseas Filipino workers who would like to set up their technology-based micro-enterprises. This is to distinguish our program from the rest, which are giving livelihood programs uh, or looking for jobs for them. Uh, in this particular case, we are helping them put up their technology-based uh, micro-enterprises. And uh, we have now an ongoing batch of 98, which have passed our screening. And our ongoing now is their phase one of uh, assistance, which is really basically training on both uh, enterprise management and in technologies of their choice. We have also a new program called iStart, which is Innovation, Science, and Technology for Accelerating Regional Technology-Based Development. We are fielding uh, scientists, uh, researchers, and engineers to help uh, those uh, both local government units and uh, prospective investors in if they want to put up uh, uh, new investments in technology-based industries in the area. And of course, uh, uh, we are busy also in helping uh, okay, through our, uh, uh, our uh, activities related to remote learning and uh, uh, no, no, that should go to Kinabukasan. These are the technology courses offered by our institutes that can help people put up their enterprises and livelihood activities. Uh, an example of that is the Galing Picard, which is really livelihood on Agri and Aqua. And Kaayusan, of course, has been uh, our concern being part of the interagency task force on emerging uh, infectious diseases. Uh, we have helped the, uh, the, the IATF in terms of the disease modeling faster for COVID in terms of uh, the model for uh, new growth centers, uh, which was done uh, by uh, the UP School for uh, School of Urban and Regional Planning. We, we commissioned them to do it. Uh, we have, of course, implemented rapid pass. And what is the other pass? This is the next pass. Safe pass. Uh, so the rapid pass is at checkpoints. The safe pass is for buildings. And the tracing for allocation of medical supplies. This is an app. And the project Ramdam, which is uh, helping our LGUs in terms of resource allocation, management, distribution, and monitoring. And finally, uh, this is the one I was referring to. Uh, we have been helping DepEd in terms of uh, delivering uh, uh, science and technology uh, learning modules uh, through remote uh, learning. That also includes the initiatives of our Philippine Science High School, uh, who, which is very willing to help other uh, schools uh, in adapting their curricular adjustments and their blended learning modes, uh, learning modes under COVID-19 environment. So this, uh, uh, your honor, is our uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary uh, De La Peña. And uh, we'd like to note of what you mentioned, and we commend and congratulate the uh, UST family, despite of the uh, pandemic, despite of the fact that in the, in the passage of Bayanihan 1 and 2, hindi ho kayo humingi o nanghingi doon sa pondo doon. And yet, Philippines has ranked top 50 out of 131 economies in the Global Innovation Index 2020. So congratulations. We'll, perhaps we'll talk about it later, what, what, what happened and uh, what we have been doing. But at this juncture, before we continue, let me in, um, uh, acknowledge our distinguished colleagues uh, virtually present here today. Senator Bongo, Senator Coco Pimentel, and Senator Amy Marcos. Good morning, and thank you for joining us, dear colleagues. Uh, we'll give the floor now, uh, if, if you may, distinguished colleagues, uh, the uh, Philippine uh, Space Agency would have uh, five, I think only five slides anyway. Perhaps we can uh, uh, continue with the presentation, and then we'll, we'll ask questions. Sir, uh, DG uh, Joel, you're uh, recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, and good morning po sa inyong lahat. Um, can we go to the slides of the Philippine Space Agency po? ang aming presentation, no? uh, medyo uh, may kilang naman po at very straightforward. Okay. 
in a court. Yes. Proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So, so the title of our presentation uh, reflects, in a way, our mantra at the Philippine Space Agency, a nation bridged, uplifted, and empowered through space. And our goal is really to create and add value in space through data industry and people. So, magandang umaga po, Joel Marciano. I was, uh, we have, uh, PILSA is about a year old, uh, uh, but we have really started uh, operating and mobilizing since March of this year. Um, Republic Act 11363 established the Philippine Space Development and Utilization Policy um, and the uh, Philippine Space Agency and for other purposes. It was signed by the President on August 8th last year, and I was appointed to the position in January, and since March, we have been mobilizing. In the Philippine Space Act, uh, there are the, key, the following key development areas in space science, technology, and application. Uh, national security and development, hazard management and climate studies, space research and development, education and awareness, uh, space industry capacity building, and international cooperation. So let me say for this juncture that even though FILSA is a new agency, uh, we are building from the ground up, yes, which is a good thing, um, but we are not starting from scratch. And that is largely because of the prior and ongoing efforts of the Department of Science and Technology in uh, funding and promoting space science and technology and application programs, uh, many of which, uh, some of which have been mentioned by the Honorable Secretary de la Peña in the previous uh, presentation. So next slide, please. So what you see here is really, uh, well, next slide, thank you. The PILSA, um, in Section 25 of Republic Act 11363, was allotted an initial appropriations of uh, initial appropriation of one billion pesos coming from the office of the president for its initial operating year. Upon mobilizing in March this year, we immediately um, got in touch with the office of the president and the Department of Budget and Management in order to access this funding. However, um, because of current uh, constraints in uh, resources and also the inability to program that budget into the OP during last year's budget cycle, this one billion initial operating fund of the PILSA uh, became unavailable for. So upon uh, discussion with DBM and OP, what we proposed was to, if this funding was not going to be available to PILSA in 2020, which is our initial operating year, then we will propose it for SANA in our 2021 budget. So what you see there in the table is a total proposal of 1.676 billion pesos uh, divided into our general administrative services in our operations. And um, maybe uh, just to quickly highlight uh, the bulk of the operations uh, budget is an MOE. You see there an amount of 1 billion uh, 74 million pesos. And that is really to continue the satellite development efforts that have been started by the DOST in which PILSA is expected to take over. So there are existing infrastructure, technological capabilities, and personnel that are available to the PILSA now. So while we are um, building from the ground up, we're not starting from scratch precisely because of these available capabilities, people, and infrastructure that have been put in place. Um, now, in the 2021 NEP, what was uh, retained there is really the MOE uh, under the gas of the PILSA with an amount of 113,717,000. Now, with regard to personnel services, um, because the organizational structure and staffing pattern of the PILSA is still under final review by the DBM, then uh, we were assured that for 2021, the PS budget of the PILSA and its requirements will be funded through the miscellaneous personnel benefit uh, fund, uh, the so-called MPPF. So what, what this really reflects in our view uh, with regard to the 2021 NEP is a budget that would be would enable the PILSA to just uh, get started and established. However, as mentioned, there are ongoing activities that the PILSA will be building upon and which are part of its operations, which we hope could still be uh, made available. So next slide. Let me talk a little bit more about a couple of these flagship initiatives of the PILSA. The first one is what we call Build, Build, Build in Space, or B3IS. And it is a reflection of the uh, of Philippine satellites as a vital component of information infrastructure 
that promotes digital inclusion, a digital economy, and a digital government. So in this proposal, we intend to build, launch, and operate a 100 to 150 kilogram small satellite that will cater to data requirements of various sectors and groups in the country. Now, the funding for this project has initially been uh, provided by the DOST grants in aid to the tune of 370 million, and this covers the first year of this project, 2020. So the TILSA is counted upon to fund the succeeding phase of this project and to absorb the personnel, the skilled personnel, that uh, will be part of the project. So shown there on the table is the full requirement for 2021, um, which is not in the net. And we have also put in there a couple of prioritization options, a priority one, two, three, a varying degrees of prioritization, which, um, well, in the last priority three, we are going to forego the satellite and just build um, the peripheral infrastructure that would help build it perhaps sometime in the near future but maybe not for next year. So yung po yung uh, differences in those columns, priority one, we will continue with the satellite development with launch and then accompany that with a clean room. We will forego some of the additional payload development. With priority two, we will forego the clean room, we'll just focus on the satellite development. And then priority three, just the clean room and the satellite will not be funded. Next slide, Bob. Now, the other flagship uh, initiative of the PILSA is what we call mobilizing satellite images and other space-borne data for digital inclusion, economy, and government. This is the downstream segment of space. Essentially, we see these satellites and our presence in space as part of a national infrastructure that would yield valuable data and information for data-driven policy and uh, evidence-based programs. The PILSA will be institutionalizing the operations of a couple of DOSD-initiated programs, namely the Remote Sensing and Data Science Help Desk, or DATOS, which provides satellite image and data processing to government agencies, and also our ground receiving station, which we call PEDRO, Philippine Earth Data Resource and Observation Center, and they operate the country's ground receiving stations located in Quezon City and in Davao City. So the full requirement for this is 140.4 million, and then we have trimmed that down uh, as a second priority to 64 million, wherein we forego um, the procurement or availment of satellite images. Next slide. Now, last point for is that, as you can see in the NEP, uh, it's all MOE, wala pong capital outlay ang PILSA. But this is essential in this uh, day and age, especially as we continue to work from home and with uh, arrangements, uh, work arrangements that are remote. So uh, as PILSA builds up, we would need, of course, workstations and computers and laptops. And I understand perhaps the, the uh, moratorium on procuring vehicles might apply to uh, organizations that already have vehicles, but for PILSA, we currently do not have any. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to borrow one vehicle from the office of the president, but it needs to be returned at some point. So that is uh, why we listed it for as a prioritization or capital outlay requirement. So last slide na po. Let me end this presentation by sharing with everybody the mission and vision of our new Philippine Space Agency. The FILSA envisions a Filipino nation bridged, uplifted, and empowered through the peaceful uses of outer space. And our mission is to promote and sustain a robust Philippine space ecosystem that adds and creates value in space for and from Filipinos and for the world. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director General uh, Joel. We'll, we'll start the ball rolling by uh, giving the floor to the Chairman of the Committee on Finance, uh, Chairman Senator Sani Angara. Sir, boss. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman Joel, and uh, good morning to the DOST family led by Secretary Boy. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll throw out a few questions there and uh, then anyone can answer. Because uh, some are for FILSA, some are for uh, the department at large. Uh, we all know the budget for, I think, R&D is uh, insufficient and historically has been insufficient. So maybe we'll ask for a priority list uh, of uh, additional R&D that perhaps uh, the chairman might wish to endorse 
to the larger committee. And uh, if he does so, then of course we will uh, look at that. And uh, my question, I guess, for the secretary is uh, thank, uh, congratulations for, uh, I know you've been doing a lot with very little uh, and that's been the lot of the DOST and hopefully that will change, no? Um, but in terms of 21st century industries, uh, Secretary, Mr. Chairman, how how can we kind of leverage uh, our, our maybe, um, uh, what's the word, to leapfrog, to leapfrog, I think is what I'm trying to say, into those industries and create some kind of favorable ecosystem for that. So I, I don't know. Huh? I'm not an expert on these things. So like things like fintech, data science, analytics, internet of things, uh, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, genomics, artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, new energy, all of these. Ano po ang uh, may potential po dyan, uh, in terms of ramping up and in terms of uh, leveraging our limited resources? Mr. Secretary, that's quite a difficult question. So I'll throw out my other questions to the field side in the meantime, while you're uh, trying to compose an answer, uh, Secretary Boy. No, uh, I have some questions for the field side. Uh, maybe again, you can give your priority list to the chair of the subcommittee, and we will. Uh, he will be in charge of prioritizing prioritizing uh, what, uh, given the limited resources, it's very difficult to budget in the time of COVID. Your honors, no, as you realize. So we really have to make some difficult and wise choices. Um, and uh, in case, uh, so for Filsa rather, could you tell us uh, regarding your proposed uh, flagship projects for the satellites, what do we get for the various, for non-scientists like uh, most of us here, what do we get for the full, the priority one, the priority two, the priority three, uh, dun sa, uh, vital IT infrastructure, and then dito naman sa uh, Datos and Pedro, uh, what exactly are we getting there? Uh, that seems to be a more manageable number, no? So, uh, given the choice, we'd, we'd like to know what are we what are we talking about here? When you say satellite image and data processing, is that uh, something that perhaps our defense agencies could use or our DILG or our DND could use? Uh, uh, Director Joel. Please. May I, may yeah, I go ahead, uh, Yes, please reply uh, while the U.S. is collating their uh, answer. Please. Okay. Yes, thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Angara and uh, Mr. Chair, for that. Uh, let me start with the build, build, build in space. So there are, uh, this program is about continuing our satellite development efforts. And um, when we talk about infrastructure or things that our country needs, for example, um, let's say helicopters or uh, jet fighters, then we acquire them. Po, no? um, but rarely do we get access to the underlying technology components of these, uh, these items. But in space, there are opportunities that exist for us to gain access to the underlying technology. And that's precisely because we send our engineers and scientists to, to build these satellites themselves. So when they come back, well, of course, uh, later on they can do it here, um, they retain the know-how and, and that uh, technology, and they bring it back to our shores, and we can now start engaging other groups. Uh, of course, industry. Uh, we want to cascade this know-how to industry, and that would be the start of a local industry development in space technology, or in general, in building products that are difficult. Uh, a difficult, high barrier to entry, and also very competitive. So it can be a good area for our country in terms of our semiconductor electronics, IT, machining, and uh, mechanical industry to be um, capable in supplying the global and burgeoning demand for these satellites. Um, so anything that requires high reliability, um, high reliability, robust technology, whether it is in space or whether we put it one, uh, 200 feet underground in wells or in mines, etc. We need this kind of uh, technologies. So, with regard to this prioritization, po, of, um, well, as mentioned, the DOST po na fondo na ng uh, initial tranche for building our next satellite. And this satellite is an Earth observation satellite. That means it carries cameras. And by carrying cameras, okay, uh, by carrying cameras, it uh, 
gets data no, of our environment, of our surroundings, of bodies of water, vegetation, land areas, etc. So that is the purpose of this satellite. And as mentioned, we're not just acquiring a satellite by building it with our engineers and scientists. We're gaining access to the underlying technology. So that is always that is a good priority for us because it helps us to also build industries and not to mention the data that we will get from this satellite. In terms of priority one po, um, itong ang full priority is of course uh, the requirements for 2021 of this satellite, which is building the satellite uh, itself, putting the corresponding payloads and uh, peripheral systems in this satellite, and also building on the ground this facility that will enable us when our engineers come back and, um, to build the satellite again, which we can because we have access to underlying technologies, um, we have a clean room no, and other relevant facilities. So that's a full priority. In priority one, we forego some additional payload. We focus on the satellite and the clean room. In priority two, we forego the clean room. We just focus on the satellite development. And last, um, the priority three is really just the clean room. So yung po yung satellite development. Now, regarding the second flagship project, yung mobilizing satellite images, ang, ang, ang balak po natin dito is to complement the satellites that we are building, we also need access to satellites of other countries and even commercial satellites. So this is in the form of uh, in, uh, getting image uh, data from them. So our funding requirement is really to continue um, gaining access to these satellites uh, and the data that they can provide because otherwise what we can do is just build more of our satellites so that we can cover the spatial and temporal um, intervals that we need to, to cover our country. But in the absence of that, we continue to rely on uh, satellites uh, abroad. No? So then we also need corresponding infrastructure that will enable us to expand further yung capability natin to process this data. And dyan po ginagamitan natin yung mga nabanggit yung po kanina, yung mga artificial intelligence, machine learning, these are new technologies. Well, well of course, uh, very relevant technologies now. Not necessarily new, but we apply them on satellite images. And this is part of building our knowledge workforce as well. So the priority one here is foregoing the subscription to satellite images and just focusing on uh, equipment on the ground that will expand our capability to process satellite images. Ang Tilsa po kasi, ang eventual home niyan is in Clark, uh, in, uh, in the Clark uh, Special Economic Zone. So we want also to build a high performance computing facility done that will enable us to serve the surrounding area uh, outside of Metro Manila with this computing uh, capability. So, yun po muna. Thank you. Uh, Senator Angara, if with, with the indulgence of Senator Angara, can I just uh, follow up on something? Please, 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 Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, Director General Joel, you made mention about your priority to uh, to uh, launch uh, yung, yung, yung satellite uh, imaging and uh, data and imaging satellite no ang, ang question ko why not or is it more of a priority than launching uh telecom sa uh, satellite uh won't the philippine made telecom satellite uh, make internet cheaper i was just thinking about it because you know th this is very important because a lot of people would think that um uh, there's a, a certain misconception na pag sinabi na itong uh, Philippine Space Agency is main its main priority is to uh, to launch an astronaut in space di ba and Philsas aims to uh, build telecommunications na binabanggit niyo ko kanina i think i i don't, I don't know uh, when it comes to priority would you think it's more of a priority to, to build uh, uh, telecom sa uh, satellite para Kasi especially now, I think it is crucial na ma-increase natin yung uh, demand for internet bandwidth to support our work from home uh, uh, arrangements, uh, etc. Thank you, po, Mr. Chair. That's a very important question. Yes, uh, in my mind, po, um, well, the satellites are, are can be used for telecommunications and for Earth observation. And what we have been in the past, uh, more focused on our telecom, our, our, our Earth observation satellites, are, um, excuse me. So Earth observation satellites carrying cameras, but certainly, yes, there is a need to uh, have better connectivity and to serve uh, rural places, which are beyond the reach of current telco facilities. And I think a satellite overhead 
can uh, has been proven time again and not it's nothing new really it's not new technology other countries similarly situated like the philippines uh, archipelagos elsewhere also rely on these satellites um i think it's a question also the technology is available it is possible to uh, there are already satellites overhead uh, covering with footprints covering our territory that can provide service they just need to have partners on business partners on the ground to enable access to the satellite and distribute the service so um, I, I understand there is a, also an executive order that is being proposed to try to uh, lower the barriers for these for these groups to deliver internet uh, service through satellite technology so there are existing solutions already if we are to build one it is a slightly more complex project for um, this, the satellites are higher in orbit, uh, geostationary, as opposed to our Earth orbit, uh, as opposed to our Earth observation satellites, which are 400 kilometers up. These are 40,000 kilometers up, and so they take more substantial resources to launch. They tend to be bigger, more expensive, and uh, it's a very specialized technology, which currently we do not yet have access to at, at this time. But but um, if there is a, a, an impetus to look at this technology, which we're already doing now in the background for, uh, together with um, some people at the DICT, perhaps, um, then we can look into that, uh, whether it makes sense for a country to invest in a sovereign satellite or lease capacity. Perhaps it's a phased approach. In the beginning, we take advantage of what's there. And then, um, and then maybe citing maybe some security concerns or uh, uh, capacity issues that we want, then we can a look, certain look into building one, and FILSA will be very willing to cooperate with relevant agencies in terms of that. Access okay, to which the means that's more practical. That's great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Senator Sani. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Chairman, think... same topic lang. Sisingit lang ako kung okay. okay. Senator Sani. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, for my two chairs. Hindi, sisingit lang ako nabanggit ni, uh, ni Chair Sunny, yung satellite. Um, whatever happened, we had some preliminary efforts in remote uh, sensing through satellite. And we found it, uh, at least at the very beginning in the pilot areas, uh, very useful agriculture and fishing. Because it was uh, very clear in the pictures where to fish and where it was useless to fish. It was also very clear where the soil had dried up. Our, our efforts in uh, remote sensing through satellite are uh, still continuing. Itatanong ko lang. The other thing was that there have been suggestions for uh, school broadcast um, to do it through a satellite, which is relatively easy. And uh, we wouldn't have to get involved with the internet, which is so uh, defective. So I was going to ask, these are very practical uh, applications that we can actually do now, exactly like uh, Chairman Angara was saying. Ano kaya nangyari na dun? Uh, yung remote sensing, binigay sa atin yung makina, I remember, uh, after the Guimaras oil spill, and then yung uh, sa DepEd naman, I remember Governor Chavit Singson was recommending na ibim na lang direct to TV ang mga leksyon ng bata. So I was wondering, uh, can't DOS, uh, DOST and our Fil Philippine space um, address those very, very practical uh, concerns? Please. Thank you for it. Yes, um, yes. Um. Um, uh, Senator Marcos, thank you for that question. Yes, our efforts in remote sensing through satellites continues, and that, that is also precisely what we want to do. We uh, don't want to just continue it. We want to further expand it. And the key here really is getting the information in the hands of the people who can create action out of it. Um, I think in the past, uh, with the efforts of DOST, we have built infrastructure um, and the capability to build these Earth observation satellites. We continue to access other countries' satellites. We have ground receiving stations. We have a modest high performance computer um, um, hosted by the Advanced Science and Technology Institute. We want to expand all of that. So we have some of the ground infrastructure in place, but this needs to be uh, sustained and expanded further. And this is the supporting infrastructure that allows us to do remote sensing, machine learning, and artificial intelligence on geospatial data. So that continues, Paul. But um, with this, but the work ahead for Filsa in this regard is engaging different groups um, in agriculture, fisheries, environment, national security, etc. Uh, uh, possibly through the Philippine Space Council 
so that we can get this, these tools and information in the hands of decision makers and the policy makers and those that implement programs so their programs can be more effective because it's based on evidence um, um, which is obtained by our satellite. But sir, but sir, the chairman of finance is already asking you what budget for R&D need to be implemented. Kaya hingin na ninyo yan. Kasi malaking bagay yan sa mga magsasaka namin eh. Nakatulong talaga yan sa amin. Pati sa fisher folk in the overfished uh, northern Philippine seas. Thank you ma'am. Yes po. Our budget for is... Uh, yes, go ahead uh, Secretary De La Peña. I, I, I'm happy that uh, Senator Marcos uh, brought that up. I just would like to add that, uh, well, first of all, the Philippine uh, Space Space Meet for the first time on October 9. Uh, and uh, this is actually an uh, interagency uh, council. But I would like to uh, uh, follow through with uh, what uh, Senator Marcos mentioned about uh, uh, monitoring uh, crops, monitoring the fisheries area. And uh, I just would like to add, for example, that uh, as far as the environment is concerned, uh, we have uh, projects that uses uh, remote sensing. Uh, for example, in the Manila Bay area, uh, we have a uh, mapping and monitoring uh, uh, activity there, uh, which uses remote sensing. So, uh, for example, uh, correct me, uh, Joel, if I if uh, I'm not accurate, but uh, uh, there are, uh, for example, uh, two satellites that uh, pass uh, regularly through that area. We have uh, the Landsat of the U.S., we have Sentinel of the uh, uh, EU. Uh, I think Sentinel uh, passes uh, through that almost daily already. And uh, uh, we can monitor, for example, uh, at least uh, three things in, in the bodies of water, like uh, uh, the, uh, the the chlorophyll indicator, which uh, will show if uh, uh, marine life uh, uh, still exists in the area, the uh, suspended uh, part particulates uh, indicator, uh, and of course the turbidity indicator. Uh, no, secretary, because I was told it. Sorry, sec sorry, secretary. I I was told that it's relatively simple. Just a minute, yeah. Uh, huh? Yeah, uh, because you simply you just subscribe you pay the subscription to nasa and you can download all this information about phytoplankton and then uh, the adequate fishing grounds parang madali lang yun eh parang quick fix subscribe ka lang sa nasa and elsewhere and you can access all this data that would be really critical for our hard put the agricultural se sector what was the question, Senator? Uh, sorry, is it correct that, as I was told previously, that like Taiwan, we don't even need to embark on our own setup, but merely download locally um, a subscription to NASA and the other agencies uh, that already have satellite and space setups and use this information locally? Is that a correct uh, 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 I think you will uh, reply to that better. We can do that. We can do that. I mean, instead of uh, because we still need people to do the uh, the uh, interpretation and uh, you know. Ang klaro-klaro naman, sir, kasi nakita na namin yan sa MMSU sa Ilocos. It's accurate within half a meter. And it was so good for our farmers, especially our fishermen. Because you can see the dark areas with phytoplankton. It was like magic for them. Uh, instead of launching into these complicated uh, satellite initiatives, hindi po ba pwede mag-subscribe na lang tayo sa mga existing? Bibigyan naman pala tayo ng pera ni Chair Sunny eh. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I uh, interject? Mr. Chairman, Chairman. Uh, uh, Secretary Boy, do you remember that uh, yung sinasabi ni Sen Aimee, ni Vice Chair Aimee, sa MMSU, that was a Comstay initiative eh, back in uh, 2013 or 2014. In fact, uh, you you you'll uh, remember that because you were then you you sick and you you were the one supporting us uh, at the time. I was still in the house at the time, no. So tama si Vice Chair Aimee na maybe we can do the more down to the more earthy things, but at the same time keeping an eye on the uh, on the ball also for uh, the more esoteric uses. But uh, uh, from 
uh, Director Joel's uh, answer. It's not esoteric at all. In fact, there's a lot of spillovers. So, Mr. Chair, to save time, I will just ask for a one-pager from Director DG Joel. Uh, maybe I'm maybe Vice Chair Amy wants more information, but I would just like to know the spillovers of investing, let's say, in the full funding requirement for the Philippine satellite of 952 million. What are the spillovers? He mentioned uh, semiconductors, etc. And my, my follow-up question lang there, Mr. Chair, if I, if I, uh, if I may, is that uh, um, a lot of times public investment, the, the, the benefit goes to private entities, no? So in this case, uh, is there a guarantee that the intellectual property, for instance, uh, will somehow be shared? Uh, I mean, I know it's a public good that everyone should benefit from, but uh, it should not be ben uh, private entities should not be benefited disproportionately in comparison. Dapat patas lang dun sa investment anam public at kung anin lilabas ng privado. So yun lang yun ang concern ko going forward, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I still reply to the initial questions of Senator Angara regarding? Uh, Yes, please. So I'm actually waiting, uh, waiting for that. <laughs> please, that, please that, proceed, those, Secretary. Those were the original questions. That yeah, I yeah. Oh. So uh, with respect to uh, R&D, of course, uh, we are hoping that there will be some additional amounts for our uh, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development because they, there are so many things that they have to attend to at, at the moment. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, we have... Uh, a, uh, a proposal under the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute, and this is really the program on nuclear medicine, as uh, uh, we have already expressed in uh, media releases. Uh, uh, there are so many people uh, dying of cancer who do not even have the benefit of uh, undergoing the PET scan uh, because of the uh, high expense, and this is what uh, we intend to address. Now, as far as the leapfrogging is concerned, uh, uh, Senator Angara refers to the GNR, Genomic Nanotechnology uh, Robotics. I think uh, the uh, initial uh, 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 programs of DOST, and that was the support to the creation of the Philippine Genome Center, which is now uh, uh, located not only in, uh, in the UP system, Diliman, but also in, uh, uh, in um, uh, UP Visayas uh, and the UP uh, Mindanao, has been uh, doing a great job, and particularly during the COVID uh, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, it has uh, been doing a lot of uh, assistance, uh, particularly even in the training of people who will run our uh, uh, PCR uh, laboratories. Uh, in the case of uh, nanotech, as we all know, this has applications uh, in different sectors. Uh, in the uh, new material sector, for example, uh, uh, researchers have led uh, to uh, uh, the development of uh, materials obtained from abaca, these are nanotech uh, materials which have special uses. Uh, in the case of health, of course, is uh, drug delivery, uh, uh, personalized drug delivery is the uh, target, and uh, we have also set up now a genomic laboratory for nutrition at the Philippine, at the Food and Nutrition Research Center. As far as robotics is concerned, um, I think uh, we, we, we are addressing this through our Advanced Mechatronics, Robotics, and Industrial Automation Laboratory at the uh, Metals Industry Research and Development uh, Center. And this will be very, very much utilized now with the instructions of uh, the President regarding uh, bringing up the level of our uh, uh, SMEs uh, uh, in moving towards IR 4.0. So, uh, this particular group at MIRDC uh, will be included uh, in uh, uh, assisting our identified MSMEs, which are ready to move towards 4.0. And uh, I think I should also mention that uh, uh, we need support for the startup enterprises because these are uh, the, the these are the kind of uh, uh, innovations that we need to leapfrog. Now, as far as artificial intelligence is concerned, we have an ongoing program. Uh, together with the Development Academy of the Philippines and the Data Analytics Association of the Philippines for uh, 30,000 slots for on online training on data uh, science and data analytics. And uh, so far, uh, we have around 50% uh, uh, of the 30,000 already availing. Uh, this is for data scientists, data analysts, and model builders. And uh, we uh, take advantage of this through the capstone projects, which we require them to do. Uh, particularly in helping um, 
uh, LGUs, for example, and other uh, national government agencies. Uh, we are now supporting uh, scholars in data science at the master's level at Nakua University, and we will be supporting a few slots, particularly for government uh, employees who would like to pursue their PhD at the Asian Institute of uh, Management. Uh, today, our HRD allows us to uh, send the scholars abroad in areas where we do not have sufficient uh, number of experts, and uh, uh, we do this through our uh, scholarships and through our sandwich uh, programs. And add to that, of course, uh, the, uh, the interest that has been generated through our Balik Scientist program, although there is still a problem on mobility, but uh, many of them are already doing short-term uh, services, okay, even uh, uh, remotely. So I think the area of leapfrogging uh, is, is still high on our agenda, uh, and uh, these are the areas which I think uh, have been the initial uh, activities in this area. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, so I don't take too much time of the committee and the department. Can I just, that, that was um, what, what Secretary gave is more of a tactical uh, type of uh, like uh, what are the baby steps to be taken. Can I get something more strategic in terms of uh, knowing where to position ourselves and maybe where we stand and how to leverage our uh, our limited resources, no. So something with the ecosystem type of of thing. It, 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 uh, it, I, I'm not in a rush here, uh, and I realize. Uh, yes, are, yes, yes, please. These these are very busy officials, so I'll, I'll just ask for a submission on that. Uh, uh, more more a more strategic uh, viewpoint, uh, Mr. Chairman, Secretary. And the last question is uh, uh, my last question is is about Philvox. Given that, uh, what is the outlook for volcanic activity? Uh, and uh, how is the budget of Philbox? That's that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, gentlemen. Uh, you can see it. Um, with regards to volcano activity, so far we're monitoring four volcanoes, and these are at the abnormal level: Mayan volcano in Albay, Bulusan in Sorsogon. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we cannot hear the uh, we cannot hear the session hall. Speaker. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll adjust, Senator Coco. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, please, and uh, kindly speak louder okay. also. Thank you. Uh, with regards to the monitored volcanoes, we have four volcanoes currently at an abnormal level. This would be Taal Volcano in Batangas, Mayan Volcano in Albay, Bulusan Volcano in Sorsogon, and Kandaon Volcano in Negros uh, Island. So far, Taal Volcano, from uh, its eruption in January, has uh, uh, shown some trends uh, of decreasing activity from January to March, but as of uh, the past several weeks, uh, this decline has not continued. We began to see some uh, um, slight uh, change in its trend from pagbaba po, paghupa po ng pamamaga because of pressure, and nakita na namin na namamaga ulit. So we have to continuously monitor it. The uh, Mayan volcano also is uh, slightly, uh, again, inflating from uh, its base. So we have to watch out these two volcanoes. Nonetheless, at alert level one, all the aforementioned volcanoes earlier can uh, uh, actually have a steam-driven explosion, meaning po, yung mga mainit na uh, magma can actually boil up the water and cause explosion. And uh, then... Uh, uh, people then should not uh, go inside their danger zones. Kasama po sa Taal Volcano Island ang pagpabawal. Uh, okay. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the time. Just uh, one more I forgot. Because uh, I read that the uh, dam or angat, the angat dam is uh, below level. What is the outlook for uh, from Pagasa regarding the um, rain rainfall for the, the, next, uh, the remaining days of the year? Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the time. Yes, please. Uh... Mr. Chair, can I also respond in behalf of Pagasa? Yes, please. Um, we are currently in uh, La Nina warning, and so there will be a press conference uh, sometime soon, but essentially they have uh, mentioned that because of La Nina, there will be more rain. Um, and so they had uh, uh, initially several weeks ago estimated that there will be an increasing trend of uh, water levels in dams, uh, but we have to closely monitor how Angat would, uh, would behave. But so far, right now, Angat Dam is uh, lower. 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 Yeah. Okay. Pa -pa -pa -pa. 
Thank so you. the rains are expected uh, in the last quarter to early next year. We're expecting it uh, this, to, this to change in from lowering to increasing. To increasing because yes. of La Nina. Thank you. Does, does it uh, satisfy the... Uh, Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you to my colleagues, and thank you to Secretary Boy and the DOST family. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Sani Angara. Next in line is Senator Nancy Binay. Uh, we also would like to uh, uh, remind our uh, resource persons to please uh, try to uh, briefly answer the, uh, the questions being raised. And, uh, of course, you're allowed to explain further, uh, but at least try to be uh, brief because we're still... Uh, uh, having some time constraint because I know that uh, the DOST family would need to go later on for your uh, plenary uh, budget deliberation in the House of Representatives. Thank you. Senator Bina, you have the floor. Uh, maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, and good morning, Secretary Boy, and to the whole DOST family. Um, para kay Secretary De La Peña, Magkano ho yung discontinued or unreleased appropriation for 2020? Kung meron ho. I will ask ASEC Donet. Sige po, ASEC uh, Sahagun, you're recognized. And siguro padagdag na din, ano yung mga um, tinamaan na programa? We have uh, 230... We have, uh, we, we're still awaiting the release of the 330 million congressional initiative. And then, uh, in terms of uh, NDP 5, in, in terms of budget that uh, were offered in compliance with NDP 580, we offered a total of 1.4 billion this year. So, uh, some of our RNG projects had to be. Uh, uh, were discontinued or we have to work on a smaller budget for some of the R&D projects because of the, we have to comply with NDC 580. The total amount offered under uh, NDC 580 under uh, MOE amount to 1 billion and we have 252 million for capital outlay on that. And um, Secretary, may request Nyo ho ba ulit to for 2021? Talong lalo na yung 1.4 billion na R&D na binigay niya for bayanihan? Uh, can, can you repeat it, Senator? Uh, kasi di ba ho, parang you gave up worth of 1.4 billion R&D budget. Um, kasama ho ba to sa request for 2021? So, parang to bring it back. Yes, uh, Senator. Ah, kasama na, but in, in spite of that, medyo ang laki din ho ng binawas pa din dun sa R&D nyo. Na parang ang dating nga, hindi na-appreciate ata ng DBM ang uh, research and development dahil uh, makikita ho natin na yung um, FPRDI, ITDI, MIRDC, PNRI, and PTRI, lahat ho yan, uh, medyo substantial yung uh, nabawas sa mga budget nila. Yes, yes, uh, Your Honor. Actually, uh, in, in addition to sa nabawas, uh, yung mga, yung pong aming mga request sa uh, Tier 2 ay uh, ito ang sumusunod sa R&D. Yung uh, grants in aid, uh, our request for additional 2.111 billion was not uh, uh, granted. Uh, even uh, the request for additional uh, budget for our three, three councils, 886 million for the Council for Health, uh, 551 million for the Council for Agriculture, and 508 million for the Council uh, on Industry and Energy were also not uh, uh, granted. Uh, so ito po yung mga priority sana uh, na madagdag uh, doon sa aming uh, 2021 uh, budget. Yeah. Sigur, Secretary, um, can you just um, submit to the committee yung uh, kung baga wish list nyo, lalong lalo na dito sa mga uh, R&D institutes, institutes nyo na nabawasan ng pondo. Yes, yes, Your Honor. You will submit. And then, na, napansin ko din ho, dun sa FIVOX, ang laki din ho nang nabawas sa budget nila. Eh, alam naman natin na uh, very important dahil 
Di ba sabi nga nila, nasa ring of fire tayo. Uh, in fact, we just had that uh, uh, Taal Volcano last January. Ano ho yung uh, magiging um, epekto at ano ho yung mga programa na tinamaan for FIVOX naman? Dahil nga, ang laki ho nang nabawas sa pondo nila. Ito new stations at equipment, but uh, you say Rene can probably give some of uh, okay. Yes, Your Honor. Eh, siguro, ah, Secretary, maganda din malaman kasi parang bakit ang laki na binawas ng DBM dito sa fieldbox budget nyo? Ano ba yan? Dahil may, ano, hindi yun nyo na utilize or? Yun pong mga malaking part would be related to the equipment support and they took away the ICT support of the monitoring system. So essentially, po, uh, as you know, uh, many of uh, the monitoring systems now uh, are directly supported by IT. So even if you have sensors, uh, this will be operated, maintained, and evaluated using IT equipment, and those were taken away. Um, the other projects that uh, were not funded would be on uh, strengthening the tsunami awareness and resilience of communities, which uh, also is crucial. So the possibility of tsunami all over the country on both sides of the... Sir, that is part of the 133 million. Am I correct? Na binawas, yes. Uh -huh. That's part of it. Yeah, hindi na approved. Hindi na, okay. na, na, hindi na approved, yes. Because yes. you offer the total of 1.4 B in compliance with NDC 580. So Mr. Chair, Senator Nancy. And... Yeah. Uh, uh, napansin ko nga na may reduction, katulad ni Senator Rabina. Napansin ko there's a reduction in the FIVEX budget. Um, and I realized that it was IT, like you said. Um, parating may balita na ang FIVEX ninanakawan, tuloy-tuloy ang pagnanakaw ng equipment ninyo, taon-taon nangyayari ito sa lahat ng mga bundok. Eh kung walang uh, IT, wala pang security, wala na nga kayong personnel, uh, hindi ba dapat yung IT tutukan to o dagdagan ninyo ng personnel? Kasi nabawasan na kayo ng overall, IT pa, eh paano ninyo hihintuin itong uh, continuous uh, pilfering and uh, stealing of FIBOX equipment? Ayan, Yusek, medyo madami na yung nag, nag pile up na questions. Can, can you, yes, can you answer short also? Lang. That's uh, accurate, nananakaw talaga? Not really. Uh, there are a few. It's not so prevalent. Not prevalent. And typically, what they take away would be the solar panel and battery. But indeed, uh, we have uh, IP cameras in this station, so we can also monitor. But indeed, the, uh, the, um, the IT support, ICT support in operations, Need, should not be separated from the actual sensors, and that's the, uh, a real issue. Because, ano po eh, uh, computer run na karamihan ng mga equipment na yun, uh, in various aspects. But uh, we continue to operate. We have spare, so hindi naman kami nawawala ng uh, total uh, lack of presence sa isang lugar. And just to clarify, 133 billion yan, no? Ay, hindi po. 133 million. Million lang po yan. Huh? Million. 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 And I, I, I'm just wondering, no, because you made mention there are four abnormal uh, activities, uh, yung sa volcanoes natin, no? How will it affect affect the uh, the uh, the disapproval of your uh, request? It will not affect the current monitoring of those volcanoes. The current it will not, because na nakakabay bigyan. Hindi naman po. Na isyu ka nina tapos biglang wala pa lang po do. The main okay. issue is we will uh, slow down in terms of uh, modernizing or putting up more stations. The modernization will, yeah. will slow we down. We have like every year po we add more stations for earthquake, volcano, and tsunami. Okay, thank you, Yusek. Sige, please. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. And Nancy. Uh, Yusek, siguro for submission then ko ano yung mga projects na kasama dun sa 133 million. Yes, ma'am. And then, um, Secretary Boy, um, di ba ho, uh, may, may um, programa ang DOST kung saan, uh, parang mayroon kayong ginawang study na pwedeng magkumabit dun sa, uh, kunwari sa Globe or Smart for areas na hindi, na walang signal? May ganun ho ba kayong... Uh, yeah. Uh, initial program kasi alam naman ho natin di ba uh, lalong lalo na ngayon na uh, online ang uh, gagawin ng DepEd and 
uh, isa doon sa reklamo na pagdating ho doon sa mga uh, malalayong lugar, mga bulubundukin, eh wala talagang signal. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I answer? Uh, so, Senator, yung, uh, actually, isa yan sa mga instructions during this zona uh, to see, for example, how uh, uh, unused TV frequencies uh, can uh, be utilized, particularly in support of uh, remote learning. And uh, there are uh, three uh, specific actions that the DOST is uh, taking in relation to this. One of them is uh, uh, the setting up of uh, what we call community-based cellular, network, cellular networks in very remote uh, uh, places na uh, parang yun na rin ang kanilang telco pero community-based and operated. So we are planning to, to uh, set up in uh, 10 very remote uh, places uh, in different countries uh, just to show that uh, it can be done even if the uh, big telcos are not located in those areas. Check. May, may, is, may funding ho yung 10. There's funding. Uh, sinasama na po namin sa aming budget ngayon. Okay. okay. Uh, in the case of, uh, uh, yun namang uh, tinatawag na, may, meron tinatawag na data casting, you know, and maybe uh, Dr. Marciano can help me here because uh, he has been assisting us even if he's no longer with the OST in this uh, respect. And the last one, of course, is the development continuing development of uh, uh, learning modules, which we have started uh, uh, almost eight years ago. It's mga computerized modules. Uh, uh, wala pa sa guni-guni namin itong, uh, itong uh, uh, mangyayari na ito, but uh, dinevelop na itong mga computer uh, learning modules. Grade 1 to 8 for uh, mathematics, and uh, we started with uh, uh, grade 8 for uh, science. So, uh, we, we, we continue to do the uh, development. So maybe very quickly, Senator, uh, Director General Joel can say something about the data casting, which we hope to work together with PTB4. Thank you. Okay, please proceed. Yes, um, so yung pong rural connectivity that uh, can be provided through um, non-conventional means, ang napagit ko ni Secretary de la Peña, is we can build and put up a new model for delivering service in these spaces, uh, which are neglected. Yung mga community networks po. So if they can if they can be empowered to provide service in their respective areas uh, until as a bridging solution until uh, the telcos come in and find the area more profitable and then perhaps that they can they can sustain that connectivity. Meron pong technology that exists. Uh, we started that point at the OST ASTI. And uh, moving forward, when I move to Pilsa po, we will uh, we have pledged our cooperation with DOST ASTI and DOST Fisher to continue. Uh, interfacing and uh, working together there po. because I think also satellites can provide an additional overlay our small satellites can provide basic communications that can support that ground infrastructure um, yung mga cellular based uh, not cellular community networks po use mga open source technology to build relatively simple not so complex um, infrastructure like LTE uh, that can provide uh, connectivity in those areas now, isa rin pong uh, approach na pwede natin gamitin is we can accelerate the rollout of digital TV because digital TV has additional features. It, it can also possibly enable some interaction uh, wherein the viewer can send back uh, very simple messages and uh, that in that way they're interacting with the content. So it's better than just possibly, uh, possibly watching the content uh, audio and video. So that is something that um, in my current capacity for still I will continue uh, interfacing with the DOST as appropriate and working on those projects. We have sufficient budget for that for next year. You have su sufficient budget now for next year. For for those type of for those type of projects. Cellular networks and. Uh, uh, we plan to put up uh, 10 of these in very remote areas. I set aside na po kami ng uh, budget. Pero dun sa mga data casting na binabanggit, ang uh, inaasahan hopefully namin eh kung yung PTV4 ang kapartner ay uh, sana ay uh, sila naman din ang uh, mag, uh, mag, uh, bigay ng resources. Uh, Secretary, siguro magkano ba ang kakailanganin for that um, data casting? May, may I talk? Please, give us a ballpark um, figure. I think yung, yung data casting, as, um, uh, pwede po yan kasi i-upgrade yung mga existing TV broadcast stations natin uh, with that additional capability. Um, uh, I think ang ballpark figure po is uh, an additional per, per, per station, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
order po siguro mga between 15, additional 15 M uh, above, you know, to enable that feature. But of course, that, that just, that's just an add-on to the existing uh, capability of a station. But if we, what we want is also to roll out the infrastructure in other places, then the costs will be uh, additional no? if you want to put up this, this TV station, uh, um, digital TV station in other places. So um, we, there, there's, um, you have to put up the towers as well and the equipment for. So I think um, um, PTV4 also with our prior consultation has some uh, plans um, about that. And um, ang input lang po namin doon is kung magtatayo ng panibagong mga TV, digital TV infrastructure, isama na po yung feature ng data casting. That's our input. Um, so may additional po na parang module doon. It's a whole part siguro po mga 15 million pa above as an add-on. Okay. So, DG Marciano, pwedeng i, ano na lang, kumbaga, ikarga sa budget ng PTV4, more than your agency? Well, actually po, sila po talaga yung uh, may, ano doon, ang may infrastructure doon, yung mga TV stations natin, tama po yun. Now, in the case of Filsa po, um, we, we are looking into this technology also as uh, putting it into our small satellites. No, ito pong mga uh, ginagawa natin mga CubeSats and SmallSats. Also, can, there is a TV standard that applies also to this, and we can apply uh, to, to satellites, and we can use data casting on these small satellites as well. And uh, DG Joel, di ba, meron na naman tayong CubeSats na may ganyang capability? Um, not yet this capability, uh, Senator. Um, what we have is a capability for our small satellites to take signals from the ground, from sensors, uh, distributed in possibly remote places that are hard to reach. For example, we're tracking the habitat of, uh, let's say, the Philippine eagle or other endangered species, and then they, they, they carry these uh, radios, no? and then we can sense them through satellites, and then we can store them on our satellites. Of the thing over Metro Manila, for example, then we can download that data. So it's a semblance of connectivity. Uh, it's called store and forward. And we can also apply that to supplement yung mga remote infrastructure that we have with trickles of data through this uh, constellation of satellites. So that's also quite possible for, and we are looking into that, and we are hoping that with an operational budget for next year, we can incorporate this, this into our satellite mission. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just asked uh, Director General Joven, you said 15 million per station, but uh, uh, to uh, have an impact, mga ilang stations dapat ang, uh, ang idagdag. I would I would say po uh, to that is uh, nationwide coverage. So I guess we um, I, I think ang, ang, um, ang number of stations po yata is roughly a handful, no? maybe over ten uh, locations on TV four, if I'm not mistaken. That they might have plans. Uh, I cannot really speak for them po, but uh, we need to have a uh, nationwide coverage. And as archi archipelago, I think it becomes a bit more challenging to cover. Uh, that, uh, so I think we, we can look at the NTC database and see where the stations are already are and see whether these uh, area, other areas are not being reached by these signals. So then that can be there so we can deploy. Ang kagandahan po kasi siguro sa TV station is that in one hop, we can get information from point A to point B. We just have to concentrate the content on the station itself, you know, somehow accumulate the content. We can cache it there. Uh, store it there, and then in one half it gets to the destination. It's not the same as the internet, uh, nothing ever will be, but it's a, it's a good bridging solution, and the fact that this technology has these additional features which we might be forgetting about, I think it's a good time to really take advantage of this and uh, accelerate the rollout of the infrastructure. Um, well, Siguro po one per region, if I, as a ballpark figure, I really have to look at the, 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 the further study on that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Secretary de la Peña, do you think sufficient na yung 10 na initial community-based telcos nyo? Yung ipinasok na po namin sa aming budget yung uh, 10 uh, nung uh, community-based cellular uh, networks in remote areas. But if we kumakaka na po tayo na funding, would you want more? Uh, Siyempre po kasi marami tayong tinatawag na GDA. No, yung mga growth disadvantage uh, areas. Siguro, siguro Secretary, can you just submit the yung 10 na nasama niyo na sa budget niyo? And then yung um, wish list. Wish list niyo kung saan pa kayo pwedeng, kung saan niyo pag gustong magdagdag. 
i-submit na lang po namin. Oh. Yes. Ah, siguro balikan na lang natin. Um, thank you, Secretary. Kay, dun for the space agency. Yes. DG ah. Joel. DG Joel. Yes. DG Joel. <laughs> More compared to our ASEAN neighbors, where are we in terms of um, number of satellites? Okay, thank you Pop, for that question, Senator. Yes, we have launched three small satellites. It's a it's a major accomplishment for, uh, in, in terms of the amount of time that we have been able to accomplish that. So we are in everybody's radar. Our partners in Japan have recognized this milestone and, and accomplishments. We are in a good spot uh, no, because of the momentum and more importantly, because of the people that we have been able to train and retain in country. So while I mentioned earlier that PILSA is building from the ground up and not starting from scratch, I'm afraid that what will make us start from scratch is when we lose these people to the brain drain. No? So I think because of the talent and the hard work that we have on these people, the young engineers and scientists, we are in a good spot. For. So then the satellites will catch up. I think, if it, but as long as we have the manpower and the capability and infrastructure and the resources to challenge them and to continue building, not just the satellites, but the spillover effect po na sinabi ni Senator Angara kanina, no? some of them will go to industry, some of them will go to government, etc. So I think we are in a good spot right now uh, in terms of our uh, what, we are, what we are poised to accomplish further. If we have three... So like Indonesia, ilan ang, ilan ang satellite nila? Or um, Thailand, Malaysia? Well, ang, ang Indonesia po um, currently uh, is able to, uh, when we talk about Earth observation satellites, their space agency um, uh, has a capability to re, uh, deploy a satellite or has a plan to deploy a satellite approximately every three years. So they do have uh, three or four orbiting uh, satellites already, and then not to mention yung mga telecom satellites that they have access to, and some of which they own themselves. No? So ibang-ibang classing satellites po yun, ibang category yun, yung mga telecom satellites as opposed to the Earth observation satellites that we're currently building. No? In, in, their, in their LAPAN, in their space agency, they have a plan that every three years they, they, they deploy a satellite, and that's been seen over the past uh, few years consistently. So um, we are around three. Uh, later this year, we hope to deploy one more CubeSat. Uh, next year, and these are programs for the DOST. Next year, we hope to deploy two of our CubeSats that are built in Philippine universities. Ito po yung Maya series, no? nagawa na po ng mga local scholars natin. So that will bring our total to six. And in international space reports, we are now included in the roster of countries which are, are being acknowledged as having um, several uh, government uh, small satellites. So I think we are in a good spot by comparison. And also in the in terms of the space agency that we have established, and, and uh, ang kailangan na lang po talaga is uh, resources to keep the momentum and to build on top uh, to use this accomplishment as framework. Po. Katulad nga ng suggestion ni um, Chen Aini kanina, di ba? Bakit hindi na lang uh, mag-subscribe dun sa existing satellite for example, sa NASA, what would be the advantage or disadvantage of uh, doing that compared to investing sa sarili nating satellites? Yeah, thank you po for that question. I was hoping to get back to that earlier po, uh, earlier thread po. Yes, um, we have, well, precisely yung pong nabanggit kanina ni Senator Amy Marcos regarding the fishermen getting access to the information. Uh, I believe it was Dr. Comiso, one of the scientists from NASA who visited the Ilocos region sometime in the past as part of Comsteren, as a public scientist as well, uh, to brief her on that program. And that is precisely the kind of end-to-end -end, uh, value chain that we want in, the, in our country in terms of getting access to space data, uh, translating it into information and actionable insights and bringing it, bridging it to the people that can use it. There are many more verticals like this, but not just for fishermen. Uh, if we count the number of different crops that we have in our country, we, have, we want to have this value chain in place for every single agricultural product that we have or the industries and the infrastructure that we need to monitor. So, and we, there is value in being part of the, every step of this value chain. Uh, that means also being able to access, just access other country satellites, but building our own because there are spillover effects in terms of building an industry. Uh, our semiconductor and electronics is still a breadwinner for the country in terms of exports. So 
So we need to give them a diversify their products, make them build more difficult products that can compete in the global market and take a, a share of the 40,000 satellites that Elon Musk is planning to build and maintain for internet connectivity. So there's an emerging market for it and we hope to enable that as well. So that's part of being, uh, being, being embedded in every step of the value chain. For so, 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 Senator Nancy, Senator Nancy Chair Joel, yes. ipipida ko lang kasi nabanggit nila si uh, Dr. Joey Comiso. He's a scientist in NASA who did all the preliminary studies for the polar cap melting of the, um, the um, uh, Al Gore books and all that uh, stuff. There are actually 12 resident scientists who are Ilocano, uh, Filipino in NASA. So we're we're very, very proud of them, and they always provide us with data, but they're completely puzzled by our failure to access all this free satellite information. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Amy. So, DG Joel, parang may job generation component din pala yung uh, satellite build-up natin. Uh, tama po yun, Senator. Yes, it is about um, building a knowledge workforce. It's about learning how to build more difficult products in our country, which requires um, you know, highly skilled workforce and a more robust uh, economy in terms of our outputs and the complex outputs that are of our country. So yes, tama po yun. Okay. Uh, don't forget that uh, particular data that Senator uh, Angara is asking from you. Kasi siya yung chair ng finance eh. Ay, yun nga, yun nga, nga chair eh. I-re-remind ko lang kay DG Joel yung, yung nga, yung I would also ask the same wish list para mapagtulungan natin kung paano natin matutulungan itong uh, space agency. Nakakalungkot kasi di ba, part when we pass this uh, agency, dapat may kasama tong 1 billion na uh, initial funding. But uh, kung may problema tayo sa IRR, may problema din tayo pagdating sa funding. Marami tayong pinapasa na madalas unfunded and kabilang na nga itong um, space agency. Siguro, uh, Mr. Chair, um, last question na lang for Secretary De La Peña. Can we just get an update dun sa local kit that was developed? Kasi nung, I think, budget hearing ng DBM, parang hindi ho ata natutuloy yung procurement ng DOH for the locally, locally manufactured PCR kits. Opo. Kasi parang Opo. nagka-problema daw ho, parang I bumalik don't... ata ulit dun sa... Sir Chen, nagkaroon po ng contamination no unang bahagi, yung in-import na kanilang uh, components. But uh, uh, actually, hindi lang naman Pilipinas ang na-apekta noon. Ang dami nag-import from that country. So, nagpalit lang ng source and uh, we were able to replace all of those. And uh, so, the commitment of our project, which was uh, uh, part of that uh, development of 26,000 uh, uh, tests, has already been uh, uh, met. And uh, the uh, uh, technology-based company that was uh, put up, the Manila Health Tech uh, Corporation, has, uh, al has already been receiving uh, uh, so much orders, uh, even from the private sector, from LGUs. And uh, uh, they have already uh, increased their capacity to produce you know, uh, from the original uh, rate, uh, uh, which I think was only at uh, 3,000 uh, tests per, uh, per day. Uh, to uh, 8,000 tests per uh, per day. So uh, the, the, it seems that uh, it is an uh, ongoing uh, uh, business already. Uh, so far, we have not received any uh, uh, problem or complaint from the uh, uh, startup company. And they are uh, looking forward to uh, uh, plans to uh, expand uh, to cover other products. And uh, if I may just uh, go back to the questions of uh, uh, Senator uh, Nancy, with respect to this uh, community-based cellular networks and to data casting, according to our uh, uh, Executive Director of the Philippine uh, Fisheries or Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, uh, and Emerging Technologies Development, the uh, 10 uh, that we have planned for the community-based cellular networks will hopefully uh, cover uh, the remaining 12%. Uh, according to DepEd, I think the well, access uh, to connectivity then, uh, as far as the data casting that was mentioned is concerned, uh, according to our featured, uh, our uh, desired number would be uh, 10, okay? And uh, we are already covering two from our uh, existing uh, funds. 
and um, uh, we have uh, gotten an indication from PTB4 that can they probably re uh, support four remote relay stations. So uh, maybe an additional four so that we can uh, uh, deliver the 10 that we have planned for uh, this forthcoming year. 15 million okay. per Thank station. You. Thank you, Secretary De La Peña. And um, reminder lang ho yung submission nyo ng wish list nyo for the uh, R&D institutes na nabawasan ng fondo. And uh, rest assured ho, together with our chair, Joel Villanueva, and our finance chair, um, Sunny Angare, eh, talagang hahanapan ho namin ng fondo dahil alam ho namin na kung gaano kahalaga ang research and development sa ating bansa. Uh, muli, maraming salamat po. Secretary De La Pena and uh, just a uh, final, final word for Senator Angara. And I just wanted to uh, assure Senator uh, Angara na yung po mga pinlanon namin ng delayed Senator Angara during the Comstead days ay, ay nangyayari na. And uh, the fact that uh, in the GII, the Global Innovation Index, the fact that uh, we rank number 25 actually in terms of uh, science and engineering graduates out of the 131 is an indication of a very positive uh, development. Thank you very much. Chair, badagdag ko lang. Siguro ho, Secretary Boy, napansin ng DBM kahit maliit yung binibigay sa inyong budget, eh, umaangat naman kayo. Kaya siguro, hindi nila uh, nakita na kailangan nyo pa ng additional budget. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Nancy, especially for your support uh, to this uh, development, itong uh, FILSA and DOST. Next in line is uh, Senator uh, Bongo. Senator Bong, uh, you're recognized, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Wala lang po akong uh, tanong. I express my uh, support uh, for the budget of the Department of Science and uh, Technology and uh, Philippine uh, Space uh, uh, Agency. Uh, na, na, na confirm na ba yung uh, Mr. Chair na confirm na ba natin si ano yung sa Philippine Space uh, Agency I think uh, your honor I think uh, the uh, consensus is that uh, he he doesn't need to undergo correct. if I'm correct uh, uh, I was the one who pointed that out chairman chairman Joel during the CA I pointed that out yeah na no need to to confirm the head of the PSA Yes, and we submit to the wisdom of our number one uh, bar top notcher here in the Senate. Also a BS Mathematics graduate, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Coco. Uh, Pagkutaan na ba sa ibang space, uh, Senator Coco? Pwede na daw sa Mars, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, uh, especially Lord uh, Department, uh, led by its uh, very hardworking Secretary Fortunato de la Peña, in striving to continuously improve our efforts in uh, research and development in uh, and science and technology. With your efforts, uh, together with the rest of the government, we will overcome this crisis. I would like to congratulate the DOST because the Philippines uh, rose uh, from rank one one hundred. Uh, in 2014 to rank uh, 50th uh, in the Global uh, Innovation Index 2020, a symbol of uh, hope for the country that is currently fighting uh, the pandemic. Indeed, hard work and constant uh, pursuit of uh, excellence do pay off, uh, but let us not be complacent. Uh, we can still improve and we should, and we are here in the legislative, legislative branch uh, is behind you to do. Uh, our uh, part to help. I also implore the DOST as the lead uh, agency in, in charge of clinical trials for the COVID-19 vaccine in Metro Manila, Calabarzon, and Cebu to ensure that the vaccine trials are expedited but still in accordance with applicable scientific uh, standards. Please make sure that the vaccine is uh, safe. Yun lang po ang importante para po hindi matakot ang ating mga kababayan. Siguro doon natin na uh, safe yung mga uh, vaccine na uh, inyong uh, uh, nasa trial, sa, trial stages po sa, sa ngayon. I also take this opportunity to, 
to express my uh, uh, excitement over the country's first uh, real push into becoming a space-capable uh, and space-faring nation within the next decade, as embodied in the Philippines uh, Space Act. Every great nation has uh, the goal of uh, seizing uh, the space uh, frontier. And I am happy to see the country take its uh, first steps uh, toward the realization of this uh, lofty uh, goal. Uh, kumusta na po yung uh, uh, tra clinical trial natin, uh, Secretary uh, Boy de la Peña? So far po, thank you, Senator, uh, for the support. Uh, we have uh, uh, already signed uh, six uh, confidentiality uh, disclosure agreements. Uh, uh, involving uh, five countries and uh, uh, so far I think uh, uh, what R Russia has already submitted uh, all the, the, the data that uh, uh, have been uh, requested uh, by our vaccine expert panel and uh, it, our panel has already uh, sent uh, their reaction and request for additional data. Uh, uh, this The other one which will probably send the uh, uh, next uh, batch of data uh, we expect the uh, uh, Janssen, the Janssen uh, vaccine developed by uh, Johnson and Johnson in the U.S. to uh, send uh, the data that are being uh, uh, required from them. So all of these are needed so that our uh, sub PWG on uh, vaccine uh, development uh, can uh, do the endorsement uh, to the FDA with the final uh, uh, say. Uh, we are also awaiting, Senator, uh, the release of uh, the vaccines that will be included in the WHO uh, vaccines regarding the uh, trials. Uh, they uh, said that uh, by uh, the start of October, they will uh, release uh, the uh, list of vaccines that will be included. And um, we have already at the DOFD set aside uh, the needed funding for the clinical trials uh, uh, for this uh, WHO vaccines. Uh, we have set aside a total of 89.1 million pesos uh, to cover the, the, the zones that uh, you have indicated, uh, five in Manila, one in Calabarzon, one in Cebu, and one in Davao. Um, in the case of the so-called independent trials outside of the WHO solidarity trials, uh, we are requiring the uh, vaccine developer uh, to finance the clinical trials in the Philippines. Thank you, Senator. lumabas na mga uh, nababalitaan po ako na meron ang lumalabas na mga uh, vaccines no uh, ayaw ko na po pangalanan anong uh, bansa pero uh, dumaan ba ito sa inyo at ano pong uh, komento nyo tungkol dito uh, so far po uh, wala nung mga nung mga ganon kasi ang uh, una dapat na makakaalam ay ang FDA uh, kung merong pumasok na uh, bakuna o dito o hindi. Uh, sa amin kasi yung pong mga kausap lang namin uh, as other than the WHO are uh, those countries which we either approach because we have bilateral agreements with them on science and technology and the others uh, which actually approach us because of the intention to uh, uh, do trials here eventually for marketing purposes. Maraming salamat, uh, Secretary uh, Boy. Uh, full support po ako sa inyo, uh, Department of Science and Technology at sa Philippine Space uh, Agency. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank, you thank you, Senator Bongo, and uh, especially for uh, your support in this uh, uh, with, with the both agencies, uh, PILSA and the DOST. Uh, this juncture will uh, proceed by acknowledging and giving the floor to uh, Senator Coco Pimentel. Senator Coco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Also, working lunch na lang ulit tayo. Parating magandang timing ko, parating opening line ko yan. Eh. Working lunch na lang lahat tayo. <laughs> so, uh, si Secretary nasa session hall, no? Yes, yes, Senator. Yes, uh, Secretary yung, uh, Peña and uh, G.G. Joel Marciano. Uh, uh, sige. Team. Secretary, can you tell me more about yung, ano, Global Innovation Index? Uh, uh, 
inspire us more kasi para ako first time ko na, narinig yan eh. So what is that? Who conducts that? And then what has happened? Thank you, Mr. Your, your, your Chair. Your permission. The Global uh, Innovation Index uh, has been uh, in operation for more than a decade now. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is actually uh, being uh, uh, implemented or operated by three institutions mm -hmm. uh, led by the World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO. WIPO. Uh, with the uh, INSEAD uh, of France and also uh. the Cornell University of the uh, US. Uh, they have around uh, 80 different uh, uh, indicators that they use in uh, doing the Global Innovation Index. Uh, mm -hmm. They categorize this into the so-called uh, uh, input innovations and the output uh, innovations. Uh, the input innovations, of course, uh, are uh, those which require resources, like uh, how much uh, we spend uh, for education, how much mm -hmm. we spend for yeah. uh, and uh, other inputs. Uh, on the uh, output side, they uh, measure uh, certain uh, output indicators like uh, uh, the knowledge uh, generation, the knowledge uh, absorption, uh, the, uh, te the technology-based products that are uh, uh, being uh, exported. Uh, it would also include uh, the, uh, uh, our ranking in terms of the uh, uh, export services for uh, uh, knowledge type of uh, businesses. And uh, in the case of the output uh, innovations, uh, this year we ranked, uh, I think that was number 41. And uh, for the input innovations, we were ranked uh, 70 all in all. So overall, uh, our ranking uh, is now uh, 50 out of 131 countries or economies. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, summarized the, or the, the highlights of the report of the uh, three agencies uh, led by WIPO is really encouraging. Uh, first, they said that uh, uh, our uh, uh, rise to 50th uh, rank out of 131 is uh, remarkable in the sense that if you go back uh, to 2014, we were number 100. Uh, secondly, uh, we are uh, one of four economies or uh, countries that uh, were identified as uh, having the best uh, improvement in uh, GII. The four countries are China, India, Vietnam, and the Philippines. As far as the low middle income countries, there are 29 of them. Uh, we were ranked number four in terms of uh, uh, the GII. And uh, I think it is uh, very uh, interesting to note also uh, the remarks that the Philippines uh, 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 which uh, has uh, actually recently passed uh, two acts, the Philippine Innovation Act and the Innovative Startup Act, uh, actually demonstrates, uh, uh, shall we say, the national policy of putting importance in uh, innovation in the overall uh, uh, pro pro program or uh, uh, plan of uh, government. And uh, so we were also uh, invited, and uh, it, is, it was an honor for the Philippines, the book on the Global Innovation Index 2020 that they released uh, featured 16 chapters. The first uh, seven chapters were written by uh, uh, academics okay, and, and people who were experts in terms of uh, uh, innovation. Uh, uh, and the other chapters, uh, from I think from 8 to 15, were uh, written by representatives from different uh, 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 continents. And... Uh, or geographical areas. Uh, we, we, the Philippines, uh, and specifically, I was invited to write uh, Chapter 8 uh, in behalf of uh, uh, the uh, Southeast Asia and uh, Oceania. So that was already, uh, I think, and uh, also a recognition yes. of uh, our... Uh, Thank you. Our uh, Secretary. Uh, Senator Coco, with the indulgence of uh, Senator Coco, let me uh, just acknowledge the... Uh, Presence, who is uh, physically present right now. Senator uh, Ping Lakson is also vice chair of the Committee on Finance. Sir, good, good afternoon. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. came from the PDEA DDB, so I presided over the budget. The, the, the Senator Lakson want to uh, want, want to go ahead. I I, I believe. Uh, uh, okay. We will send you, Senator, the uh, details of... Uh, uh, okay, Secretary, Secretary, question. Uh, can I continue, Chairman Joel? 
Yes, you may. Yes, you okay. may. Uh, Secret Secretary, uh, I hope available naman yan sa online, uh, yung study para yung details we can just check online. Uh, you mentioned we, we, we were number four sa middle income countries. Which countries uh, were ranked ahead of us? Para lang malam, makita natin ang situation. Ah, hindi mo alam. Okay, okay. Tapos, binanggit nyo po yung mga startups, mga uh, in, uh, innovation, uh, innovative companies. Kaya nga kagabi, nag-hint nag ako sa, during the interpolation on create, nag-hint ako na, I think we should make uh, equity-based compensation uh, tax-free as much as possible. Because the, I think this kind of uh, compensating uh, uh, employees by startups or high-tech companies, they, they, it goes hand-in-hand hand, eh, with, with, with the startup company. So, yun po yung, yun po yung uh, logic or rationale behind uh, uh, what one amendment which I, be, I will be proposing uh, to, for, to create, no? yung create law, to create bill. Ngayon, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, Kumusta po yung ating science scholarship programs? Uh, malakas pa ba ito? Marami pa bang nag avail uh, uh, Itong question ko, uh, yung mga nagpapatakbo ba ng DOST ngayon at saka yung mga attached uh, agencies natin uh, of, which are of course uh, uh, heavily scientific, uh, are they coming from or are, are they products of uh, Yes, uh, past uh, science scholarship programs? So, uh, if I may be allowed, uh, uh, to my left and to my right are former DOST uh, scholars, uh, Dr. Dr. Joel, you, you, you were a Director General of the Philippine Space Agency, is a DOST scholar, uh, Assistant Secretary Maridon Sahagun, uh, was a DOST uh, uh, scholar, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we can cite uh, a, a long list of our uh, uh, officials under Secretary Rowena Gabara is a uh, uh, scholar from uh, high school up to PhD. Uh, we have uh, uh, Yusek uh, Brenda Mansano, who is a DOST uh, scholar in her undergraduate and uh, the directors of the Metals Industry Research and Development Center. Uh, and, uh, uh, the director of the Philippine Nuclear uh, Research Institute. They have been uh, uh, scholars of the OST and uh, the leading luminaries in the, uh, in the uh, countries, uh, leading universities in science and technology are now run by former DOST scholars. Um, if we will look at the figures from 2019, 2020, mm. 2021, uh, the number uh, of uh, scholars have risen from uh, uh, 40,000 plus to 40. 44, and uh, we expect around 50,000 in the coming uh, year. And uh, I think this is one area where DBM has been quite supportive. They have been continuously adding uh, budget to the uh, scholarships uh, uh, consistently. And uh, uh, we are uh, really doing our best so that uh, uh, our uh, scholars okay, uh, will not only graduate successfully, but also uh, be able to contribute uh, uh, to to business of the uh, country. We give them a uh, one-week uh, immersion program. We call it the Patriot program because they have to understand that uh, they are not just fortunate to be DOST scholars, but they have a responsibility uh, when they graduate. Uh, wait, nowadays, when you are a DOST scholar, uh, what do you get? What are you entitled to? And uh, what course or courses should you take? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the OST undergraduate scholars receive a uh, monthly support of 7,000 pesos a month. Uh, that is for the 10 uh, months that they are uh, in school. If uh, their curriculum requires them to take uh, courses in summer, we also support them. Uh, they also get, of course, the tuition fee, uh, except that if they are scholars in the exclusive schools, uh, they have a limit only. Uh, what the uh, universities do if they have DOST scholars, usually they add on uh, to the uh, support uh, uh, so that the tuition fee can be handled. 
Now, uh, we also give them, of course, the allowances for books, for uh, transportation, uh, uh, in, in case they are coming from a different uh, region, going to the university where they will be attending. Our uh, MS and uh, PhD have uh, better, uh, uh, shall we say, privileges. Uh, our master's uh, program uh, gives an allowance of 25,000 a month. The PhDs receive 33,000 per month. And uh, we now already opened again our uh, uh, scholarship uh, for uh, sending scholars abroad in fields where uh, we have a very small number of uh, uh, experts. There are certain areas uh, where uh, the old-timer experts have already uh, uh, gone past their retirement age and uh, there, are, there are no new replacements. So they, we have to send some of them abroad. And uh, we also have a sandwich program which enables our scholars studying here to do their uh, thesis and dissertation work abroad. Yes. Uh, kami ni Dr. Arcelia uh, of the Nuclear Research. Did I get it? If I may, Senator Coco, with your indulgence, with, with regard to scholarship, can I just... Yes, continue, uh, please. One, uh, question. Uh, Secretary, uh, in, in our record, it says here we have a... Our plan is to sponsor a total of 43,334 higher education scholars or an additional scholar of 8,243 compared last year. But ideally, what we wanted to accomplish is to produce the likes of DG Joel and Asik Tahagun, no? That, that's the ideal uh, 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 goal. Um, but to date, how many researchers, uh, scientists, and engineers are engaged in research uh, in the country today? At ilan yung ideal kasi i'm sure yun yung isa sa mga goals natin eh yung scholars natin ma engage and perhaps the next question would be in the past is uh, SEI or yung mga science education institute able to efficiently uh, trace how many of the uh, SEI scholars eventually engage themselves in research opo uh, actually yung uh, ating uh mga uh, scholars nga ay namimit naman natin yung ating uh, target na increase so far. Uh, the number that, uh, the average number of uh, researchers per country according to UNESCO is now at uh, 380 per million. Uh, we are... I think, 380 researchers, 380 scientists researchers per million. Per 1 million per population. Million population. That's and the ratio. Think, our figures now is around 280. Uh, 100 uh, lower than that. But uh, we, we anticipate that uh, actually in terms of supply, we will meet the numbers required. The problem is the uh, availability of uh, employment in those positions, uh, in research positions. Because number one, very difficult to create new plantilla positions for researchers in the government. Uh, it is also very difficult to create new faculty positions or researcher positions in the SUCs. And if we talk about the private sector, uh, the, the, uh, many of the companies, including uh, those that are uh, multinationals in the country, uh, very few of them are really doing their R&D in the Philippines. And uh, that's the reason why uh, we also have a program of encouraging our uh, local companies to do R&D by way of facilitating uh, the build up of their uh, facilities. Please, uh, Senator Laxon, uh, with the indulgence, Senator Coco. Yeah, thank you, Senator. With the uh, permission of Senator Michel also. Actually, naunahan niyo po ako sa tanong ko, I would have asked the same question, exactly the same question, yung inventory ng mga scientists and scholars. Now, my, my point is, what good are these scholars, scientists, kung walang support mechanism? Meaning, yung R&D facilities, kung kulang, limitado yung kanila magiging uh, kapasidad, hindi ba? So, since your R&D budget for 2021 is 7 billion plus, so 7.019, uh, representing 29.379% ng inyong uh, budget, ang tanong ko po is, is this enough to support yung R&D uh, program ninyo, the department? Thank you, Your Honor. After po, eh, hindi nga po 
uh, enough. And uh, so even, how much do you need? Actually, uh, well, actually, ang itinanong sa amin po earlier, eh kung alin dun sa mga ipinropose namin dun sa tinatawag na Tier 2 na hindi naman na-approvan ang, uh, ang aming priority. And uh, uh, I enumerated that uh, in, the, in the case of our grants in, grants in aid for uh, multidisciplinary risk. Ibigay nyo lang po kami ng top 3 priorities. Oo, uh, yung top 3 ko po ay yung uh, R&D uh, budget for grants in aid at uh, 2.112 billion. And uh, the other one po is uh, actually the regional programs. They are not all R&D, but uh, they are actually involving uh, uh, the upgrading of technological capabilities of uh, our uh, productive sectors in the regions at 1.22 billion. These are the regional programs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just uh, pursue this uh, further during my time. Thank you, Senator Laxon. Senator Coco, please proceed. Yes. Yes, uh, anyway, uh, Senator Binay requested a wish list no, from the Secretary and from the Department. So, if you feel, uh, Secretary, you need to enhance the current scholarship, science scholarship program, uh, paki-indicate na lang doon sa wish list. And, of course, uh, I will fully support uh, the science scholarship program being one of your uh, scholars, no? a product, a product of the program. Yeah. Uh, With your, your uh, uh, permission, Mr. Chair, meron pong isang uh, uh, component yung program sa, sa scholarships na actually ginagawa namin ngayon as an innovation. And this is uh, uh, appointing them as uh, research fellows uh, after their PhDs kung wala silang mapuntahan na magka-hire sa kanila and this can this can be done up to a maximum of 5 years we call them the career incentive program and then we assign them to government institutions that are in need of this uh, uh, PhDs and even MS graduates uh, particularly for R&D uh, we have a very few slots pa lang po dahil that is uh, uh, limited by our budget but uh, if we had our uh, uh, if, if, if it can be granted, we want to increase this number of uh, the so-called career incentive program uh, uh, fellows uh, so that uh, they can add up to the uh, uh, research uh, human resource requirements of the other institutions, including the, the SUCs. Uh, ito na, last, last, mga, last uh, few questions na lang. Uh. Secretary, yung ibang bansa, meron silang mga, mga ratio na sinusunod no? uh, for a sound economy or for sound planning. Daw, mga, may mga debt to GDP ratio, may mga uh, deficit to GDP ratio. Meron bang, are you aware of, of a research and development to GDP ratio na so-called uh, which some economists or planners call as the ideal uh, ratio meron po ba ganong secretary at if aware kayo sa ganyan what is it and what is our r and d uh, expense to gdp or to budget ratio o depende po yun sa what what is that ideal uh, rule that you have encountered meron po indicator other than the number of researchers per million population, which is one of the indicators. The other classical indicator is the GERD, and this is the growth expenditures uh, as a percentage, or R&D as a percentage of uh, uh, GDP. And, uh, uh, well, frankly, ayoko na kung tingnan yung ratio na yun, kasi uh, the ideal, uh, the average, as uh, indicated by UNESCO, is 1%. And we are still at the 0.15%. Uh, tumataas din po kung minsan yung at, ating numerator, pero mas mabilis tumaas yung denominator. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, kaya po ako tinitingnan ko na yung ibang uh, measurements kamukha ng Global Innovation Index kasi parang nakakaroon ako ng pag-asa doon. Pero kung yung pong uh, uh, GERD... Uh, Pag kami kausap nyo, Pag, 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 pag legislators ang kausap nyo during the budget time, 
yan ang yan ang i-raise natin that there is there is such an indicator being used by uh, planners and policy makers in other countries called the GRD pero ano eh, gross expenditure on research and development kasama siguro private and public yan ano sir as a percentage of GDP ah. Okay, so that that means that we have no idea doon sa private sector. Dito, we are we are surveying them regularly. Oh, are, are they reporting to you? What what they what the what it your department? What they are the? No, what is the percentage who actually report? Uh, uh, you, but you monitor, uh, Mr. Secretary, you we, monitor. we do, we do. Well, we have a unit which is monitoring that uh, both private and public. Okay, pero siguro we can, uh, sige, pag-isipan na lang namin ng staff ko how we can make that uh, stricter monitoring, lalo na sa private sector. Re ano naman to Reporting lang naman eh. Let's make the, let's make the reporting mandatory. Ano naman masama doon, di ba? So... Okay naman po yung reporting ng private sector kasi nakaraya ah, okay. sa uh, census of business establishments. So we, we give additional funding to uh, the uh, statistics agency just to include uh, uh, that question in the business uh, uh, survey. Uh, pero yung okay. government agencies, we do a direct survey. Uh, DOSD yeah. uh, surveyors doing that. Uh -oh. well, on, sa government, meron na tayong classification di ba? code. So dapat siguro sa code lang, sa code lang huli na natin what is R uh, R&D. Pagpasensyahan nyo na po ako kasi 1982 pa involved na ako dyan sa mga Uh -huh. eh, so, so, gamitin nyo, sir, sa amin. Pagdating sa budget... Sec Secretary, Secretary, pagdating sa budget planning, gamitin natin yung GRD. So, ang sagot mo sa akin, ang GRD natin, 0.15%. Tama? And then... The oh, again, again, 0. 0.1. Oh. According to UNESCO, oh. the ah. ideal is 1%. But uh, what we're talking right now is 0. 0.015%. Point zero one five percent. Okay. Point one five. Okay. Point one five. Point five. Oh, yes. Thank you. Point one five. Oh, uh, point one five. This is zero point one five. Variation. Okay. Uh, so we are more or less one sixth or one seventh of the ideal. Tama ba yun, Secretary? Opo. Tama pa ba mathematics ko? Opo. So, mean of our budget to total budget is point, point 0.4%. Asa ah, budget 'yon, budget. Wag 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 wag, 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 wag tayo malito kasi sabi mo yung ideal is 1% of GDP. Yes. Tama? And then okay, and then using your budgetary figure you're now at 0.15% of GDP. Hindi po budgetary figure yun. That is ah. the result of the survey. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, gross. The gross nga pala with, with private sector. So, okay. So, we okay, so we have to... And we cannot force the private sector to spend more unless by law. So, tignan, tignan na lang natin yung... So, dalawa, dalawa pala yun, dalawa. So, private plus public sector. So, doon natin i-increase yung public sector. So, paglaruan na lang natin kung anong formula. So, kasi parang ang gusto sabihin, you can appeal to us to multiply times what yung uh, budgetary support for R&D sa government to bring up that, uh, that uh, percentage closer to 1%. Tapos siguro, by law, by law, we can just give incentives for private uh, companies to increase their R&D. Siguro sa tax, uh, sa tax system yan. Ba? Uh, yung sa create yata, yung ta, you know, binigyan ng enhanced uh, deduction yun. Eh. So, for every peso, you can claim more than one peso. So, mga ganong technique siguro to, to, to improve our R&D expenditure. So anyway, uh, thank you for that input, Mr. Secretary. Sa, sa, sa one question na lang, jo, sa Chair Joel, sa, sa Nuclear Research uh, Institute, which is an attached agency. Uh, not on your budget, sir, but just a question. On, on, on the Philippine policy for uh, nuclear power generation, 
where should this come from? Where should the seed idea or the initial proposal come from? From the PNRI or from the DOE? Uh, actually, the policy, I, I recommend yan, eh, ang DOE uh, with respect to the utilization of nuclear energy. Uh, I would like to request uh, Under Secretary Rowena Gabara, uh, who, who has now been uh, uh, designated as the uh, uh, Vice Chair okay, of the Interagency Committee uh, for the Nuclear Energy Program. So she is, uh, I think, connected virtually. If she can uh, uh, update us on uh, uh, the, what, what has happened since it was created last uh, August. Okay, yes, uh, she's here with us, Yusek Rowena Guevara for research and development. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there is a EO116 that created the Nuclear Energy Power Interagency Committee. In that uh, NEPIAC, in our last discussion, we have covered the 19 infrastructure requirements of the IAEA for a country to pursue nuclear power. And uh, we are now in the stage where we are putting up the subcommittees that will address each and every one of these 19 requirements. And our hope is to submit a report by December on how the Philippines can approach all of this, uh, complying with all of this. In some areas, we are already ahead, but in some areas, we have a lot to go. And uh, our imagination is that um, the requirements can be complied with, and if the government would like to pursue nuclear power, we can do so. Thank you, sir. Well, well anyway, Chairman, question lang yun, hindi endorsement of uh, nuclear power, power product, uh, generation yun. Ano? So anyway, Mr. Chairman, to, marami pa yata magtatanong. So thank you for the time uh, given to me. Thank you, Secretary, and to all of the DOST family. Salamat po. Yusek ni para po, DOST scholar din yun. Uh, DOST scholar daw, si uh, Yusek Guevara. Thank you, Senator Coco. Uh, let's proceed now with uh, Senator Ping Lacson. Sir, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, ako, I have always advocated uh, for uh, R&D. No? In fact, over the years, now from 2017 to 2020, kinukwenta ko po yung institutional amendments ko to support R&D. Umabot na siya ng 3.6 billion. While Hindi na consider ito in its entirety, not only for the OST. No? Uh, in fact, last year, for this year, for the current uh, fiscal year, uh, nagpa-augment uli ako ng 250 million pesos. Now, I'd like to find out, nasama ba ito sa for later release uh, with the passage of the Bayanihan uh, Act? Kasi marami, karamihan ng mga congressional initiative, we need hold o kaya nire-align uh, to address the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I'd like to find out, yung 250 million, review lang ito, which I augmented during uh, last year's deliberation for the 2020 budget, kung tinamaan ng uh, COVID. Pasagot po si Asek uh, Sahagun. Asek Sahagun, you recognize? Sir, uh, lahat po ng aming congressional initiatives ay hindi pa nare-release. Yeah, ibig sabihin, for later release. Which won't be released anymore. Yes, you know, sir. The reason why I have always advocated for, maski nung previous administrations pa, I have always advocated for uh, supporting R&D. Kasi I think it's time that we stop shopping and started selling. Di po ba? And with the number of scholars that you have and the number of scientists, mga local, yung homegrown talents natin, Kinasayang natin without the proper support mechanism. Kasi magiging limitado, maski no matter how many scientists we have, kung wala naman yung component, yung technical support, wala rin. Aalis lang, pupunta sa ibang bansa. Now, tinanong ko na sa inyo kanina yung uh, 7 billion, kasi ang total share para sa R&D, in the entire bureaucracy you know, sa executive department, 0.5%. Nag-improve na. Kasi previous years, 0 0.38, 0 0.4. Now it's 0.5%. And for a more simple mental computation, kasi pag iniquit natin sa GDP, medyo nagkukumpit pa tayo. Kaya ang computation ko lang, to make it uh, easier for me, 
percentage of the budget. So sa 4.56 trillion budget, 0.5% ngayon, which is uh, kung this this is your microphone, no, no, sir. 2.3 billion. 2.3, almost 2.4. Against 4.5 trillion. So, you can compare it to 4.5. But this is the integrated. Yes. All of it. 2.3 billion, 23 billion. Because in the DOS, it's 7 billion. 23 billion. 23 billion. That's right. To be exact, 22.5. Because if it's 4.5 trillion, it's 4.5 trillion. To be exact, 22.5. Because if it's 4.5 trillion, it's 4.5 trillion. If it's 10%, that's 450 billion. If it's 5%, that's 225 billion. Kung 0.5, 22.5, or 23, tama. So, is there a way para ma-integrate na lang natin lahat ng research and development efforts in programs ng government uh, under a multi-agency approach to be shepherded by uh, DOST? Para integrated, hindi sabog-sabog. Kasi nangyayari, bibigyan natin ng budget ng uh, R&D, halimbawa, AFP, PNP. Kaya po, galing ako sa PNP, nag-PNP ako. Alam niyo yung Research and Development uh, Branch or Directorate? Walang ginawa, araw-araw kundi mag-Google, nagaharap na mabibili. And that's not Research and Development. So why don't we, you know, redirect our uh, efforts to sa program in support of a uh, holistic program, ano? Kung uh, meron tayong 22 or 23 billion pesos uh, representing 0.5%, at ito ay ma-integrate natin under a multi-agency approach. Yung lahat ng agencies involved, but integrated under an umbrella, under the umbrella of the DOST. Di ba mas maganda yun para may direksyon, hindi kanya-kanya? Your uh, thoughts? Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, Your Honor, uh, ito po ay uh, sinubukan na uh, sa, nag-umpisa muna sa ano, Department of Health. Kaya nagpasa po ng batas yung uh, National Unified Health Research Agenda. Uh, batas po yun na kung saan uh, sinasabi doon na uh, apat na ahensya ng gobyerno ang uh, magde-determine kung ano yung mga research uh, and development uh, projects na gagawin, na susuportahan. Ang uh, apat pong ahensya ay ang uh, DOST, ang DOH, ang uh, National Institutes of Health na UP at ang CHED. At yan po ay maayos na tumatakbo. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, uh, kailangan nagkakaintindihan doon sa mga projects. It has come to a point na uh, ginagawa ko pong modelo ang DOH kasi ang DOH pinapa, pinapabahala na sa amin yung kanilang research money. You know, but because there is a law. Ngayon, uh, hindi pa po yan, wala pa pong katulad sa ibang uh, ahensya. Uh, although, this time, Uh, since the different government agencies are uh, members of our governing councils in the different councils, halimbawa agriculture, member nun ng DA, dun sa uh, health research, member ng DOH, dun naman sa industry and energy, kasama ang DOH, uh, ang DOE, ang DO transportation, at saka ang uh, public works. Ano? Ang uh, isa pong uh, nakikita namin ngayon, even without a law, na medyo nagre-respond ng maigi eh ang DPWH na nag-aano nag, na talaga na tawag dito naglalagay na pala ng, na talaga ng pera for research at uh, uh, ika nga eh na, nagkakatugma na yung aming mga ginagawang uh, research pero di po ba the more logical and practical agency to lead DOST kasi kung DOH dyan naka-imbak yung uh, yung efforts sa uh, Uh, research and development, medyo limitado yata yung kanilang coverage uh, of jurisdiction wise. Ano? Kasi kung ibang efforts naman, say uh, security sector naman, yung R&D ng armed forces or DND, iba namang uh, aspect yun, ibang aspeto yun. So, ang sinasuggest ko po kanina, baka pwedeng integrated under the DOST para kayo mag-shepherd na ng mga agency para lahat makukover. Do we need a law for that? I don't think so. Maybe an executive order will do. Just like kasi galing nga ka panina sa PIDEA DDB uh, budget hearing, meron sila yung EO66 ng Presidente, yung PAD, Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy. Maybe 
follow the same concept, pwede ma-integrate natin yung hindi lang yung pondo, kundi lahat ng efforts under one uh, single agency like the DOST. Because yun ang trabaho nyo, science and... Ide ideal po yun. Oh. What do you need to do it and law to, to pursue that? Or baka pwedeng i-take up nyo na lang sa Pangulo? Kaya, kaya ko po binanggit yung example ng uh, health ay... Actually, malaki-laki rin naman ang kanilang budget for uh, R&D. Ang, uh, ang iba pong ahensya, ang talagang malaki ang budget ay DA. No? Uh, actually, noong 1972, ang DA na rin po ang nag-initiate na i-create yung Philippine Council for Agricultural Research and Development under the OST, or uh, at that time, NSDB pa. And uh, ang purpose nga nila ay, as you have stated, Kaya lang, over the years, they have, uh, siyempre, created their own research uh, agencies. Yeah, that's exactly my point, eh. Kasi uh -oh. uh, merong panahon na iba yung priorities natin kasi iba yung concerns. Eh kung meron nag-guide na isang ahensya, pwedeng i-redirect yung priorities. Mm -hmm. Diba? <laughs> Dahil sign of the times, eh. Ngayon, kung sabog-sabog, kanya-kanya, kurso sila, wala kayong say, wala kayong... Uh, uh, sabi na nating influence ano, to redirect or to direct the effort towards uh, whatever research we may need uh, uh, at, at a certain time. Mas maganda siguro meron gano'n para pwede meron. tayong uh, mag-sway. So, uh, siguro papadescribe ko lang po kay Asik do uh, Tahagun. Ano yung sistema na beyond a certain amount pinapadaan sa atin ng DBM? Can you explain that? Yes, sir, because uh, at in the General Appropriations Act, meron pong uh, mention on Section 26, I think it's the Harmonized National R&D Agenda, where all government agencies should follow that agenda. So, in a way, we are uh, following a certain agenda for our research and development uh, pro programs and projects. Is, then, is there any ruling from DBM that beyond a certain amount, they uh, want our, you know, endorsement? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Under the same provision, I think uh, 10 or 100 million, 10 million and above, 10 million and above should pass. Such as for approval, for approval, not realignment of effort. No. Kasi alimbang may COVID, di ba dapat ang pagtunan natin pansin, sabihin na natin, vaccine. Eh meron tayo mga available na mga scientists, researchers, na pwede naman mag- uh, mag-invento ng uh, vaccine, mag-research. Baka pwedeng yung budget para sa, say, eto, susunod na tanong ko, next topic, yung sa bambo, yung ballistic resistance, no? But, example lang ito, na hindi pa naman siguro kailangan yon. baka yung pera para doon, yung effort para doon, i-direct muna natin para makipagunahan tayo sa pag-invento ng vaccine on our own because of the pandemic. Kung may control yung DOSP doon, mas magandang i-redirect yung effort kesa to sa more than 100 million dadan sa inyo approval. Iba yun. It, it's only whether or not you will approve the use of 100 million pesos in the budget to pursue a certain research uh, program. Magkaiba yun eh. Ang sinasabi ko is holistic talaga. Pwede yun, di ba? Just express my own personal uh, reference. We need your thoughts on this. Kasi po, uh, uh, what we saw in the National Unified Health Research Agenda is that it is doable na mag magkaayos-ayos talaga in uh, identifying the priorities and the projects. And uh, uh, ang parang nasa isip ko sana uh, ma-identify yung pinakamalalaking departments na pinak pinakamalalaki ang R&D nila Kasi doon naman po sa mga maliliit na, sa ibang ahensya, maliit lang naman yung R&D uh, components. Pero, for example, if we talk of uh, agriculture, napakalaki po ng budget nila sa R&D. And uh, uh, sa akin, kung magkakaroon ng katulad ng National Unified Health Research Agenda for Agriculture, I think that will be... Uh, for me, but we'll, we'll do our share, Mr. Secretary. Doable. Oh. Kasi awkward yung position nyo kung kayo yung magsasuggest kasi kayo yung directly involved. Baka sabihin, gusto nyo sakupin yung uh, 
kami na lang magsasuggest during the plenary debate ng DPCC. Opo, i-articulate na lang namin. Baka pwedeng as a matter of policy, ganun ang gawin. Opo, Para hindi na kayo syempre, ayaw naman nasa namin awkward na position. Oh, but, it, namin but you're amenable to that. No? You, will not, you will not object or you will not reject. Ang akin po... Eh kasi baka i-voice i- i- out namin, tapos sabihin niya naman na ayaw namin hawakan yan, hindi po, papahiya naman kami. Hindi ko lang alam po kung yung ang mas magandang approach ay yung overall na yun nga po. o i-target natin yung malalaki muna na ahensya na parang maging kamukha nung sa health. Yun, yun, yun po ang... Kasi para ma-cover ng lahat, integrate na lang natin. Huwag na tayo lang. mamili ng malalaki muna. Kasi kung gagawin din lang na policy, mas magandang policy sa lahat. Maski yung mga maliliit na portion ng uh, ng budget para sa R&D, masakot na nung umbrella. Kasi kayo yung logical na lead agency. Pero yung pong budget ay ibibigay sa DOST? Not necessarily. Ah. Not necessarily. So, gan- ibibigay pa rin sa mga departments? Naka-lodge pa rin Opo. sa mga departments. Pero Opo. ang uh, ang prioritization, Merong say on the OST, being the ah, okay. agency. Okay po, okay po yun. Tulad yung nga, sinabi ko kanina, yung CEO 66, yung PAD, merong yan DOH na mahigit sang uh, billion. Tapos merong uh, DILG, meron yung PNP na 600 plus million. Pero DDB yung, maski pa paano, merong say. Ang uh, idea, uh, sir, sir, yeah, idea po nun, eh, kahit nasa kanila yung pera, ipadaan pa din doon sa aming councils. Yes. Kasi may councils eh. Ganun ang nangyayari po sa health eh. Kahit, Ay, nasa, na kahit nasa kanila yung pera, dumadaan sa Council for Health Research and Development. Eh, sabi, nga, sabi nga ni President Ramos, kung ayaw yung tapusin ang trabaho, task force ang i-create nyo. O kaya council. <laughs> Wala matatapos unless a single agency is fully in charge. Maraming trabaho hindi matatapos pagka may council, pagka may committee, pagka may task force. Kaya nga sabi, di ba, kung ayaw yung tapusin ang trabaho, easy lang yan. Kaya tayo ng task force. Yung pong council naman, existing na yung mga yun. Okay, anyway, so much for that. Para lang nakasingit na kasi ako nakakaya sa mga kasamahan. Yung sa, interesado po ako having come from uh, the security sector, ano, sa armed forces at sa PNP. Yung ballistic resistance, yung sa engine bambo, sabi nyo, it will cut the price from uh, 2300 uh, from 16000 to 2300 uh, ang tanong po rito mayroon pang recommendation sa para sa military para i iporsun nila ito yung bamboo engineered uh, armored yung armored oh okay. sa po kasi ano eh organic eh bambu, marami tayong bambu. Kung ma-promagate natin ito, ma-perfect natin, ma- malulumain ka sa atin. Ongoing na yun, di ba? Ongoing na po yung project na yun eh, in collaboration with the na, with, out, the, with the DN. Na ito, ginagamit na, or ongoing na trial. po. Ongoing na. When you say ongoing, what is the status on trial po ba siya? Or uh, roll out na po ba ito? Hindi pa po. Uh, na-approve na namin at na-award na namin ng pondo para doon sa proponent na Forest Product Research and Development Institute. So, kailan ma- pwede ma-roll out ito sa estimate ninyo? Yung para magamit na ng uh, users. P- users. Pwede pong uh, itawagin lang ulit natin si, ano, si Yusek Gibara. Uh, okay. Yung aming uh, uh, Yusek for R&D. Yusek Gibara, uh, please uh, respond. Uh, pwede pong pakiulit tong tanong kasi nag-down yung internet ko kanina po. Uh, okay, Yusek uh, Guevara. Ang tanong ko lang po, interesado ko doon sa Bamboo Engineered uh, Ballistic Resistance, yung invention. Ang tanong ko lang uh, si kanina, kung na-roll out na ito at uh, pinetest na sa field ng military at uh, kung hindi pa at ongoing pa yung research at saka mga test, kailan ito posibleng ma-roll out? Yung pong research matatapos po in another year. So, yung rollout po would be one year from now po. I'm sorry, uh, you're saying one year yung research and then the rollout? 
roll out kasi magta-transfer po ng technology to a company kasi hindi naman po kami nagmamanufacture. So pag natapos yung research, ito transfer sa private sector na siya ang magmamanufacture. So pagka nagyari po yun, ang roll out po niyan mga after mga ano, one and a half years from now. Thank you, thank you, Yosek. That's all uh, for now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lacson. Uh, uh, we call on uh, Senator uh, Ivy Marcos. Mr. Chair, Marcos. gusto ko lang sana ang banggitin uh, if uh, this uh, Senator Lacson... Kalimutan ko lang. Uh, and this is a manifestation na rin. No? Uh, parang panawagan rin sa mga sa kasabahan ko kasi I filed Senate Bill Number 1543, yung Virology Institute. And I'd like to request uh, Mr. Chairperson I think Senator Please. Binay, kasi funded na ito for 2021. And kung hindi natin maipasa yung batas, eh baka mabalik sa treasury yung pondo. Baka pwede lang na ma-prioritize na magkaroon ng committee hearing and uh, eventually a committee report uh, is, uh, is uh, reported out on the floor para lang ma-tackle na natin yung field. Punaan niya pa si Senator Nancy. With all due respect. Thank you, Senator. We take note of that, Senator P. I, 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 I couldn't see if uh, Senator B. Nice may, uh, my budget, the point of proposed budget, that's yes. 183 million. Yes, and I think it was also mentioned a while ago about the virology, uh, Secretary. Opo, opo. But, uh, yeah, we will we'll take note of that and uh, we will uh, see to it that uh, to be able to pass this measure. I think this is very important and we fully support the initiative of Senator. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the DOST sponsored billion. Ako lang po yung nag nag file Anyway, let's let's give the floor to uh, Senator Ivy because uh, we're running out of time. Uh, Yes, sorry, sorry. I, I'll be very quick. Um, thank you very much. And uh, we listened uh, very carefully to both the space agency as well as secretary um, with regard to uh, the satellite development. I think uh, that we all appreciate and congratulate the efforts of the DOST um, in coming up with the locally produced uh, PCR. Despite the problems uh, that uh, were encountered, nakahanap tayo ng sarili nating uh, test. Kit. Um, I am hopeful, however, that uh, with the leg up that the Philippines has in robotics, uh, pwede natin ituloy ito sa telemedicine, sa mga e-surgery and so on. Alam natin na yung ating mga doktor, eh, 43,000 ang uh, sinaservisan, ika nga, ng ating doktor. Sa kakulangan natin ng doktor, iisa lang ang doktor for 43,000 patients. That's a really miserable statistic. As a result, many doctors have now uh, um, gone to consultation and even physical exam online. Uh, nakaka 20% daw sila ng trabaho dyan. So, um, given uh, our efforts in robotics, our efforts also in uh, in uh, uh, communications networks, community networks, um, I was going to ask lang the DOST, may follow-up ba yung PCR test ninyo o meron pa kayong mga COVID efforts katulad nung SNT scholarship ninyo? May nakatutok ba dito sa unang-una itong issue ng, uh, ng uh, robotics para sa telemedicine. Kanina nabanggit yung communication eh malaking bagay rin yon sa online consultations. At ikatlo, alam ko kasi I have worked with some of them from the OST yung food tech po ninyo uh, sana yun ang palaganapin kasi yan ang very practical application ng mga research ninyo sana uh, eh, alam natin that uh, malnutrition and poverty will increase by at least 20, 20 percent on account of the COVID. So it's important that we look at that. So itong tatlong bagay lang, uh, itatanong ko sa inyo dahil um, alam niyo sawang-sawa na yung mga SUC sa amin at uh, makulit ako dyan eh, sa R&D, pati DOST na dapat problem-driven dahil kasi nagiging solipsistic and occasionally self-indulgent kung ano-ano ang pinagre-research dapat may practical application at yun recommend ko nga eh, wag nang gumawa ng basic research kundi yung uh, nasa beta na o di kaya may proof of concept na para pwede nang ibigay sa publiko because after all 
public funds should go to the public good. And uh, it's very, very important that a, uh, a, a an immediate uh, practical application be found. Uh, for all our desire to help you with R&D funds, uh, kinakailangan naman yung practical at talagang uh, mapapakinabangan ng tao. So I'd like to inquire about uh, robotics. Magaling naman ang Result Tech at yung UP. Meron ba tayong tulong or uh, um, mga cooperation with DOH? Halimbawa. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You. And uh, uh, meron po kaming nakaprepare dito pero kung gusto nyo basahin ko pa din yung mga ongoing uh, projects na uh, may tinalaman sa... Uh, eh, bigay mo na lang sa amin para matuwa naman yung uh, isabit na lang yung committee. Makababang masyado, Zek. Sa health research po, tatlo yung talagang napakalaking priorities namin. So, pwede sabihin apat. Yung uh, drug discovery is one. Yung diagnostic kits is another one. At yung pong mga biomedical devices. So, yung listahan po ng biomedical devices, including itong mga may kinalaman sa robotics, at saka itong mga AI and ICT-driven uh, models, yan po ang uh, isa sa mga priorities. So, pwede namin i... Yun ang sadyang, yun ang sadyang hinihingi nung nagmi-meeting kami tungkol sa telemedicine. Yun ang tulong na sadyang hinihingi ng ating mga physicians. Kasi nga, kailangan na kailangan nila yan. Palibasa kulang nga yung ating doktor sa ating populasyon. Sige, thank you. Please, uh, if you could uh, submit that, we'd be very grateful. Ikalawa, yung anxiety natin na uh, yung education and other efforts walang mangyari dahil sa kakulangan ng wifi, kahinaan ng internet, baka meron na rin kayong masasubmit tungkol sa mga community networks at LTE. Tuwan-tuwa po kami dun eh. Yeah. Opo. And then lastly, eto nga, uh, hindi naman lastly, pero yung sa food tech, kasi nga, nangangamba tayo na sadyang uh, magkakaroon ng increase sa poverty levels and uh, um, real, uh, real hunger, absolute hunger. So as a result, we'd also like, kasi narinig ko yung iron rice ninyo para sa bukid nun ng bayon, para sa mga nangangailangan ng uh, iron, para sa kanilang anemia. Ikakalat pa ba yun? At meron pa ba kayong ibang uh, projects? Because I've uh, been involved with your project sa dehydrated and powdered malunggay uh, at uh, maganda siyang food supplement sa mga kabataan ang dali-dali ibigay. Opo, yung kasing uh, mga private sector na nag-ooperate na nung processing para dyan sa mga natural products na yan ay uh, lumalabas na sila sa ibang region ngayon. Pumupunta na sila sa ibang region dahil uh, malaki yung requirement po dun sa raw material uh, input. So halimbawa, yung uh, nagpo-process na nandun sa Bulacan ay nakarating na sa uh, Isabela para magpatanim ng mga malunggay at ng mga yes. uh, turmeric. At ngayon ay kinausap na siya ng aming director sa Region 1 na kung pwedeng maglagay na rin doon sa uh, Region 1 ng mga tanima na yon dahil kaya-kaya naman daw na mag-partner sila. So, kung, sana, kung sana pwede kami magbigyan ng mga ganyan kasi yan yata yung mga practical, immediate, quick wins na hinahanap ni Chairman Angara rin para mabigyan kayo ng budget kasi makikita ka agad na very responsive kayo sa kinakailangan ng tao. Ngayon, ang follow-up question ko dyan, napansin ko dun sa PCR kit, nung na-develop ninyo, private company nag-take over. Nung na-develop ninyo yung dehydrated malunggay insta meals, uh, private companies na rin or NGOs, katulad ng Negros, ang nag-take over. Ano ba yung uh, sistema dyan? Kasi, alimbawa, yung uh, benta ng private company, saksakan ng mahal. Abay, uh, gobyerno naman ang nag-develop niyan. Tama ba yung uh, contractual setup niyan? Yun po ang provided sa Technology Transfer Act. That's right, that's right. Uh, to your mind, should government get involved in um, the uh, production of uh, these products that were researched, developed, and uh, um, um, finalized by DOST or other government SUCs or research institutions? Ano pa talaga dapat? Wala naman pong bawal doon. In fact, yung pong aming mga complementary food production para sa malnutrition ay karamihan ay LGUs ang nag-ooperate. Uh, that's right. Uh, NGOs actually kesa sa LGUs, sa totoo lang. 
um, yun nga ang uh, hihingin ko sana. Yung sa communications, yung community networks, do you have more information kung saan na yan na ipilot, kung ano pa yung kailangan ninyo dyan? Ay... Uh... Ginagawa pa po yung listahan kung saan kasi kailangan din namin ng data from the ICT. Siyempre. Talaga yung hindi nararating ng kanilang ano, no, mga telcos. Kaya yung sampo na aming ibinadget for this year ay kasalukuyang pang inaalam kung alin ba talaga yung mga remote places na walang nakakarating na connectivity. Well, uh, we have to assume that there are uh, very, very many remote places po kasi talagang uh, wala. Higit sa lahat doon sa mga bulubundukin at yung mga isla, kasama na rin yung barm, eh talagang uh, alam natin ni cellphone site, wala yan. Kaya uh, kailangan magsitulungan. And uh, also, do you have ongoing uh, cooperation with the military for surveillance and other efforts? Marami po yun sana ang sasabihin ko kangina. na pwede na yes. magbigay ng briefing. Ano? Kaya lang, hindi po namin ito pinapublish sa media. Kasi... Kaya syempre naman, kaya lang, hihingi ako kung papayag si uh, Vice Chair Joel ng listahan yan. Kasi alam naman natin ang internet, demilitarized technology yan. Alam natin yung Israel, halos lahat ng kanilang technology eh, nag-uumpisa as military uh, um, uh, tools. So sana yung mga de-weaponized, de salimbawa, o di kaya uh, cooperatively developed, malaman din namin para map pondohan rin namin yung iba dyan kasi gustong gusto namin tumulong sa R&D, yun nga lang uh, as I said, they have to be problem driven and uh, not uh, indulgent of uh, our own scientific theories they really should have practical application. Yun lang po so uh, request for information lang. Very happy. Yes, request for information and very very interested po. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, that's it. Um, basically, I'm um, requesting uh, any uh, studies or cooperation uh, or other ventures that you have with regard to telemedicine, yung mga robotics and AI na uh, hinihingi ng ating mga doktor, ikalawa, yung practical application din po sana sa communications, yung tinatawag na community networks and LTE, kasi alam naman natin na uh, sakit ng ulo ng bawat nanay kung paano mag-aaral yung anak na walang wifi, ikatlo yung uh, uh, food technology to address uh, malnutrition, Kasi na-anticipate na natin na lolobo ang hanay na mahihirap. At ikaapat, uh, kung gusto ninyo confidential or uh, nasa privileged information, yung mga cooperative uh, uh, R&D po ninyo with the military na makakatulong higit sa lahat sa surveillance. So maraming salamat po. That will be it. Thank you, Joel. Thanks, Coco. Okay. Chair, Chair, Chairman, kung may time para ng sinabi ninyo. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Aimee. And uh, please comply with uh, all the uh, requests uh, uh, of our uh, dear colleagues. I know we are uh, pressed for time. I know a lot of us are hungry and uh, we couldn't have lunch. But uh, I would just raise some, 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 some very short uh, issues. Perhaps I, I, I'd be uh, dwelling in just uh, two issues, uh, Secretary. First is, uh, let me put on record that most of us here in the Senate are, are supportive of R&D. We are all aware of uh, uh, its importance. In fact, we have been saying, and we sound like a broken record, that now is the best time to innovate. And it's good to know that when we started this hearing, you made mention about our uh, placing in the innovative uh, index from 100 plus to 51, and it's such a uh, 15, no? and uh, it's such a great uh, feat. Uh, and I think we need to do more, and uh, we are here to help, we are here to support. One issue that I'd like to raise is the uh, involvement or the engagement of the department uh, with higher education uh, institutions. Um, I know that higher education institutions uh, play a huge role in the uh, DOST's uh, Science for uh, Change program, uh, which seeks to uh, accelerate science and technology innovations or yung uh, STI in the country through the help of R&D institutions and other uh, uh, stakeholders. In fact, uh, Mr. Secretary, this representation worked very hard last year to put in 
at least funding for every single state uh, colleges and universities all over the country. Of course, with the help of my colleagues, especially Senator Angara, who is the chair of uh, the Committee on Finance. So may, may I just get a bird's eye view of the status of this program? How is it helping? What more can we do? And perhaps if you could give me the, uh, the uh, uh, figure as to how many uh, uh, higher education institutions in total are uh, currently uh, benefiting from uh, this uh, grants in aid program of the DOST and uh, its attached agencies. Sir. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention that uh, in the case of uh, scholarships, okay, uh, the SUCs uh, do not require a, uh, an accreditation level for, for our scholars to go there. In other words, basta offered sa SUC ang kurso, pwede pumunta doon ang DOST scholar. Unlike in the private universities, they should achieve a certain level of accreditation. Pangalawa po, uh, yung aming uh, uh, programs for the masters and PhD ay uh, meron tayong uh, tatlong consortia uh, involving the uh, universities. Ano? Uh, particularly, uh, many of them are actually SUCs. So. Uh, in implementing our MS and PhD scholarships. Now, uh, with respect to uh, uh, the research and development, actually, po, uh, most of the grants and aid uh, goes to uh, higher educational institutions and uh, SOOCs in particular. And okay. Right now, how many po in total? Yan? Uh, itatanong ko po ni Kerry Yusek Guevara yung total, pero uh, ang binagit ko po kangina ay yung pagkakaput up namin ng uh, uh, 24 uh, needs research centers for uh, uh, for the regions. Uh, ito po ay nakakalat sa mga SUCs. That's good, Secretary. Just to clarify, you have right now 24 uh, needs or yung needs centers in the region. Needs uh, research centers. In 24 ho. 24. Pero meron din do private po. Kasi uh, siguro mga lima doon ay private universities also. Okay, out of the 24. Out of the can, 24. Can you also get the list of that, uh, Secretary? Yes, sir. Okay. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have the so-called collaborative projects with industry na required doon na uh, ang kanilang partner ay uh, uh, universities. And uh, we also have the uh, figures uh, for that. And uh, so, so far, we have 49 approved projects, um, many of these uh, involving uh, uh, SOOCs. Now, ang, ang uh, number of... Uh, uh, SOOCs that have uh, received grants in aid for research and development, yun ang uh, itatanong ko kay Yusek uh, Guevara. Uh, but uh, ang, uh, ang masasabi ko po accomplishment dyan, kung nung dati ay uh, uh, puro dito lang sa malalaking university sa, Ma sa Maynila ang nakapokus yung grants in aid, ngayon po ay nakakalat na uh, all over. So maybe we can uh, just submit separately. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, Siguro, isama na lang din po yun na uh, for submission. Perhaps another question is how many HEIs have ongoing collaborations with uh, industry stakeholders under your cradle. Ang ganda ho nitong program, itong collaborative research and development to leverage Philippine economy. Uh, can, can we... 32. 32, 32 HEIs uh, servicing 50 industry partners. Okay, 32 servicing 50 industry partners. That's good, and, and we, 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 we plan to increase this uh, 32, uh, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah, because uh, we, we are in the process of uh, evaluating the uh, new proposals for 2021. Budget for 2020 is only 125 million, no? Uh, for, for Cradle, is that correct? And for 2021, how much would that be? Like increase Suba? Yung cradle, ho. Cradle, meron bang breakdown? 20. I think it's important kasi yung, yung, yung collaborative research uh, uh, na, na ibabangga ka agad doon sa industry sa requirement. So, uh, ito very interested po tayo dito and uh, if there's also a need I think uh, this is a priority if there's a need for funding to, to reach our target in this particular item. I'm going to submit na lang, Secretary. I know we, we are uh, pressed for time. I'll... If you, you can give the figures. 
I, I hope uh, you donate lahat ng mga sales. Um, yes. Um, another is um, how many public, uh, how many publicly funded R and D projects are currently being undertaken by uh, uh, higher education institutions in collaboration with DOS? Would you know? Ako hindi ko po masasagot ngayon. At, okay. Uh, Kasi we wanted to find out also how much of your budget uh, from the OST budget for each of the fiscal years uh, uh, 2020 and in the coming uh, 2021 support yung R&D uh, projects in, of HEI. Oh, we will submit as, that. Oh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this representation is very interested about it. And last year, we put in additional funding for every HUC. So... Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, help on that particular item. And of course, we commend DOST for recognizing the role uh, of higher education institutions in advancing uh, research and development in the uh, country. Another uh, issue that I'm, I'm very interested, uh, as I mentioned, uh, two, two issues na lang ho yung i-raise ko is the uh, targets and implementation program ng setup po natin at saka CES because these two particular uh, program of DOST generated a lot of uh, uh, direct and indirect employment. And ako ho, Secretary, uh, lagi kong sinasabi dito sa Senado na ako isang buhay na patotoo uh, na makita ko po yung, yung, yung effects ho nito. No? And uh, in fact, uh, I have here with me in 2018-2019 uh, data na itong CES at setup generated 227,146 direct and indirect employment. Kaya ho, I'm a believer of this uh, particular project because uh, this means that the science and technology livelihood and uh, assistance programs of DOST benefits at least, you know, annually, you're looking at at least 100,000 uh, workers uh, annually. So, uh, Secretary, perhaps may, 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 may question lang is uh, yung status ng setup at itong CES, maapektuhan ba? Lumaki ba yung pondo natin? Mas lalaki ba yung uh, program natin about this? I was kind of worried a while ago when uh, ASEC uh, Sahagun made mention about uh, uh, congressional uh, initiatives being placed under the uh, for later release. Uh, this representation made some 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 uh, institutional amendments uh, last year in this particular uh, items, and uh, I was also told that it's still under uh, FLR. So I wanted to find out um, kung maapektuhan ngayon yung ating inaasahan na programa that will create jobs will. Uh, generate uh, employment, direct and indirect employment. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, yung, uh, yung pong aming uh, budget for setup since 2018 ay hindi nagbabago. 847 uh, ano ba ito? 847 million. million uh, 844. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, wala namang dinadagdag sa 2021 net. Kaya nga po kanina nung tinanong ko ni Senator uh, Laxon kung ano yung mga priorities ko dun sa mga hindi na-approve dun sa aming Tier 2. Ang una kong sinabi ay yung uh, grants in aid for research and development at uh, 2.112 billion and then the region programs which include setup, CEST and their local R&D which is 1.221 billion. Yes, yung sa CEST po magkano yung uh budget for this year and last year? Is there a difference? Because in, in setup, almost the same way. And Secretary, we don't want to forget, no? we made, you made mention about your top 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 list, no? yung sa research and then two, yung sa regional setup uh -oh. and uh, CES. Uh, dun sa two point something billion that you mentioned, kasama na ho yun, yung uh, sa CES and uh, setup. You were uh, wishing uh, na maging part ng, uh, ng uh, budget. Is that correct? Magkaiba po yung sinabi kong grants in aid for R&D. Yes, I, 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 I understand. But the the, the regional uh, na sinabi nyo, I think if I'm not mistaken, 1.2 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. billion. 
uh, kasama po doon yung set up and set. Ayun to ang main, yun ang main. Yun yeah. ang main. Oo. Okay. Set up. Okay. Yeah, siguro ang maganda rin po secretary if you when you submit this, yung uh, yung sila sinasabi natin, no? Uh, kasi ang ganda ho nitong programs na ito, itong dalawang programs na ito na na naka-set up itong set up at set doon sa mga regional uh, centers natin and it creates uh, uh, employment no direct and indirect employment siguro dun sa submission ho ninyo isama na rin ho natin kung yeah, ano po. yung uh, projection natin bukod, bukod pa po yun yung aming uh, plano adeto jojo yung para naman sa IFWD yung uh, innovations for Filipinos uh, working distantly from the Philippines po yung mga umuwing OFWs yes, na wala, yes. wala ba balak bumalik so Um, siguro, Jojo, meron ka ba indication kung magkano ang kailangan doon na wala pa tayong pera? <laughs> Because at this time, you, you're, you're saying it's not part of the budget uh, proposal, no? Sige nga ako, uh, Director. Uh, uh, magandang, halimbawa, halimbawa, for 2021. Well, of course, sa December, we expect to uh, release certain money out of our own regular budget. But uh, uh, for 2021, nakapuporsi po namin na dadagsayan eh. Yes, uh, definitely. So, magkano kaya, Jojo, kailangan? Uh, What are your projections, sir? Please. Yeah. Oh, maraming salamat, Your Honor. Uh, for 2020 right now, what we have right now, available funds, na dapat mag maging available sa amin is 5 million only. Kasi yung uh, iForward Philippines will be only providing at the most 250,000 for each uh, OFW that will uh, be able to establish a technology-based enterprise. However, if we are going to roll out this to the regional offices where mo most of the OFWs are right now, I think 5 million each for for the regional offices will be kulang talaga, Your Honor. So ang 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 ang, ang projection niyo at this 5 million per region at at, at the least, at but the now least. we will be able to to cater to at least 20 OFWs only. That's only for 20 OFW. If we are talking or talking here of 250,000 per OFW. Uh, anyway, sige, isama niyo na lang sa sa submit dito sa committee so we can uh, further study. Secretary, how many MSMEs have you assisted do under the uh, small enterprise technology upgrading uh, program in 2019 and 2020 and perhaps yung target po natin sa 2021? Uh, with that in mind, we wanted to find out ano yung capacity din naman natin kung lalakihan natin ito hanggang saan yung capacity natin uh, to, to, to reach that, uh, that uh, particular target. Sige po. po kasing uh, figures dito, yung assisted, uh, ito yung iba-ibang forms of assistance through uh, setup. Pero yung talagang uh, nag involve ng uh, actual uh, provision of uh, hardware, for example, uh, Jojo, ilan yun per year? 800 ba? Or uh, I, maybe I, I should call... Uh, I should call you, Sir Brenda, uh, if you can uh, provide us the uh, figures here, because the yes. estimated uh, here are uh, 23,400. Yes. Okay. Sige, you, Sir, are you are you online? Can you help us? Uh... You, Sir Brenda, please. Yes, you, Sir, you're recognized. Projects or that's equivalent to firms funded in 2019 po ay around 784 with a total budget po natin ay uh, 820 million po for the 2019 po yun <clears throat> so far for 2020 uh, 20, um, 737 ang, ang as to date or pino project natin uh, na mafafand na number of projects or that's equivalent also to the number of firms out of the 706 million and for 2021 the proposed 
the proposed is uh, basically uh, also about the kasi pareho din yung budget ng 2019 yung 2021 so it would be uh, around us um, 800 million 800 uh, firms uh, 800 firms then yeah at least 800 firms okay and kung dadagdagan natin ito uh, siguro pa-submit na lang no yung yung projection natin kung dadagdagan natin ito yung target natin how much do to uh, augment uh, your honor yes pa we'll do that pa thank you pa um uh due to uh the lateness of the hour and because the the, the DOST and the uh, feels uh, uh, one question, sir. Pwede? Family. Yes, sure. Uh, Senator Coco, please. Uh, uh, Secretary, yung, ipursue ko yung point ni Senator Marcos. When when the DUST researches, uh, puts in intellectual property, and then the product is now uh, good for commercial use, and then a private entity makes uh, profit out of the commercial use of the product researched by the DUST, is the government compensated? In any way? Oh, we, uh, we can submit a report on the licensing uh, arrangements and the amounts that have been paid by the firms for the use of the technology. So, there are still royalties that they pay. Okay, because that is, now, that is the standard way of compensating for intellectual property. Anyway, right, Secretary? Uh, it is also a provision of the Technology Transfer Act. Act, okay. They, so, okay. That, okay uh, so. Actually, the income from royalties, nothing goes to to the funding agency. Like, if the OST funded it, nothing goes to us, but it will go to the implementing agency. So, if, for example, uh, University X implemented the research project, uh, the uh, income from royalties will go to them, but it has to be divided between the institution and the researchers. So under our Magna Carta for Science Workers, there is a provision that the uh, royalties will not go below 40% going to the researchers. Oh, good. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, answer, Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Coco. If I may, uh, again, we'd like to thank the uh, uh, our resource persons present here today, Secretary uh, De La Peña of the OST, uh, FILSA Director General Joel Marciano, our DOST Undersecretaries and Assistant Secretaries, they're all uh, physically present here. Thank you for coming today uh, to discuss uh, your budget for next year. Thank you to our dear colleagues, uh, physically present, Senator Lockson, and the virtually present, our uh, distinguished colleagues from uh, Ilocos, Senator Aimee, Senator Coco from Mindanao, Senator Sani Angara, our chair, Senator Bongo, Senator Binay, um, and the rest, uh, we, we again uh, like to uh, uh, thank your uh, participation. Tulad po nung mga binanggit natin kanina, wala pong uh, nakuhang dagdag pondo ang DOST sa Bayanihan 1 at Bayanihan 2. Ngunit uh, uh, nagawan po ng pamunuan nila na mag-adjust at uh, masuportahan yung mga pangangailangan natin dito sa uh, COVID response ng ating gobyerno. 1.4 billion pa ang ibinalik ng DOST ngunit nakapag-ambag pa rin sila para matulungan ang ating mamamayan at ito pong uh, inyong performance secretary ay uh, sumasalamin sa pagiging maparaan nating mga Pilipino. Kaya po muli nating ipinagdidiinan yung kahalagahan ng innovation sa gitna ng uh, panahon ng pandemya. Uh, this is the best time to innovate. Uh, now is the right time to innovate. Likas po sa itong katangian sa ating mamamayan, kaya suportado po natin ang adhikain na paglaanan pa ng pondo ang karagdagang research and development para sa samot-saring programa ng DOST. Inusuportahan po natin yung panawagan ng DOST na palawigin pa ang mga scholarship programs para umaabot po natin yung target na 380 researchers, scientists, engineers o RSE per 1 million Filipinos in 2022. Uh, sa ngayon po kasi, uh, as uh, mentioned by Secretary De La Peña, nasa 280 RSE per 1 million population po tayo. At uh, tunay pong uh, panahon talaga na 
uh, bigyan natin ng halaga yung research dahil napag-iwanan na po tayo sa kabuuang uh, domestic, uh, gross domestic product natin. And uh, this was raised by Senator Coco, Senator Aimee, and uh, other senators. 0.15% lang po ng GDP ang kabuuang gastos ng private and public sector sa research at malayong-malayo po ito doon sa 1% of GDP na recommended uh, expenditure. It is uh, also clear to us about uh, uh, Philippine Space Agency's uh, value proposition and uh, we can say that the agency has the support of this chamber uh, in helping improve our um, internet services through satellite technology and the likes at yung iba pang mga nabanggit po ninyo. Given the increased demand of our students and the workers for better connectivity kasi we hope that PILSA would be able to do its share to the uh, development of satellites. Uh, whether ito man ay tayo yung gagawa o tayo sasakay, uh, mapag-aralan po natin itong gusto. We look forward uh, also to enabling more community-based cellular networks, especially those uh, in geographically located and disadvantaged uh, areas. Marami po tayong nabanggit kanina tungkol dun sa setup at CES. Gusto nating tutukan ito, Secretary, and uh, we're very interested doon sa program ng DOST in uh, generating uh, employment, uh, direct and indirect employment through these uh, two programs. Uh, sa Kabuuan, we'd like to thank everyone and the, uh, we would like to put on record that the budget of DOST and PILSA is now deemed submitted for plenary action, action subject for today's uh, discussion and submission of documents requested by uh, this representation and our colleagues. So maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. The uh, committee hearing of subcommittee J of the Committee on Finance is hereby suspended. Maraming salamat, Secretary. Maraming salamat po sa ating lahat. God bless us all. Joel, and thank you to all this. We learned so much.